Welcome to the University of the West Indies. West Indies. The best in the West, no, the best in the world, no, the best in the galaxy. Oh, your place to rise and your place to shine and your place to be. So get ready to experience the place where them call the way. Welcome to Pelican Property. Whenever you hear them matter about style and class and excellence that are way. Yeah. Academics, sport and performing arts, we get them thing they done properly. Been leaving our mark on the world from 19 no long till today. I know about your turn, so welcome to the family. Yeah. Welcome to the University of the West Indies. Welcome to the University of the West Indies Board of Campus. To do well at UWE, just like all great universities, there is a need to have a diverse student population. And what a diverse student population does is to create spaces where people of different viewpoints can contend, um, where these viewpoints not only contend, but force you to take on the viewpoints of others that you would have never thought about before. The University of the West Indies provides that space for students to exercise a certain level of freedom of thought and to have ideas to contend in a way which I think other universities, certainly in Jamaica, will not permit you to Because do. we party hard, but we study harder than that. This is where life begins, understand that. A new level to reach, potential unlock. And there's no turning back. Welcome to the University of the West Indies. your place to shine. As a new student, you will find countless opportunities for you to take advantage of your learning experience. As you embark on this wonderful experience in your life, it is time for you to seize your opportunity. Welcome to the University of the West in Louise. Professor Ian Boxill, or Deputy Principal, Dr. Donovan Stanberry, Campus Registrar, Deans of the Faculties, and um, Heads of Institutes, other members of the Mona Management Team, Student Services and Development Managers, President of the Guild of Students and our Counselors, new undergraduate students, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. My name is Jason McKenzie, and I serve as the Director of the Office of Student Service of Development, and I will be guiding you through the program for this morning. I am really delighted to welcome you to the Mona campus of the University of the West Indies. You have come to us from the east, from the west, from the north, and from the south, even amidst the the rains that we have been experiencing all over um, Jamaica, I come to you with sunshine in my heart because 
I'm happy that so many of you have joined us this morning for our orientation activities. You have come having been invited as VIP guests to join with the constantly expanding Pelican family here at MoMA. This is the family of Hansa Parchment, the family of Candice McLeod. It is the family of Honorable Mia Motley, Ralph Gonzalez, Andrew Goldness, Holness, and Keith Rowley. This is the family of the late Gerald Layla, Arthur Lewis, Georgia Lane. This is indeed the family of Gabriella Morris, Niall Anderson, and Daniel Mullins. Regardless of where you are coming from, regardless of where you are viewing this broadcast from, you are now a Mona Pelican. And I'm really pleased that so many of you have joined us today, entering into the realm of higher education. Despite the challenges of the pandemic, you are determined to soar, rising above the odds. I say to you, new students, this is a good time to invest in yourself. It is a good time for you to pursue higher education. Importantly, you have chosen the UWI Mona for this space, a space which is a fertile soil for the cultivation of new perspectives, diverse ideas, and cutting edge innovation. We know that you had options. Many options were available to you. And so we thank you for choosing our beloved institution as your place for tertiary level studies. I would like to reassure you that you have chosen well. And this is so because the University of the West Indies continues to be the premier tertiary level institution this side of the hemisphere. And we are very, very proud of that. You have come to the UE at a very special time in the history of the institution. A time when the UWI is expanding its global reach in an effort to provide more opportunities for collaboration, as well as for the movement of students and staff. This is a time when new heights have been gained in academics, leadership, innovation, sports, and service to the community. These are indeed exciting times in the life of the university, exciting times to be engaged in tertiary level studies. The opportunities to expand your knowledge and skills and increase your understanding of your community and the global space are endless. And so today we are here to help you on this journey. We are here this morning to help our new students to make a successful transition to UWI Mona. Through the orientation process, we want to be able to expose you to the broad educational opportunities and support systems of the institution. We want to be able to integrate you into the life of the institution, both socially and academically. We want to sensitize you to the campus safety measures and to help you understand the need to take um, personal responsibility for your safety and your security. We want to provide for you an atmosphere that will help you to make informed, reasonable decisions. We want to provide you with information regarding academic policies, procedures, requirements, and programs. For those who are physically here on campus, we want to help you to become familiar with the physical surroundings. We want to introduce our students to the role and functions of the Guild of Students. We want to create an, an atmosphere that minimizes anxiety, you know, promote positive attitudes and stimulate an excitement for learning both inside and outside of the classroom. We want to provide an opportunity for students to discuss their you know, expectations and um, perception of the campus you know, with administrators and with the Guild of Students. And so I am really delighted to welcome you um, this morning 
we have a suite of programs um, for you throughout the day. Um, today, um, leading from now on through to about 3 p.m. And, and next week, we will take you through your faculty orientation session, the schedules you can find on our website, and you will be contacted directly through your faculty representatives. And um, to become familiar with your, your academic orientation sessions that will take place um, next week. But welcome to the sitting, and we look forward to having a positive and fruitful day as we embrace the newest members of our community, or Mona Pelicans. It gives me great pleasure this morning to introduce to you our, our campus uh, registrar. Our campus registrar has responsibility um, for you know, a range of services here on the campus. He's the most senior administrator on the campus, serving as chief administrative officer, chief operating officer, and as um, the secretary to all campus committees. He has oversight for admissions, campus records management, examinations, the human resource management, international office, marketing, recruitment, and communication, office of graduate studies and research, registry, registry information systems, and the secretary. So this morning, I ask that you make welcome Dr. Donovan Stanbury, who will introduce to us Mona, members of the Mona management team, as also the campus principal, who will be addressing us. Make welcome Dr. Donovan Stanbury, our campus registrar. Um, thank you very much, uh, Jason, and I'd like to extend a warm welcome. I don't know if I have sunshine in my heart like you. It's a rather cloudy day, but I'm happy that we're able to welcome our incoming students. I think last count, there were nearly 4,300 or so who have so far accepted our offer and uh, uh, perhaps would have registered by now. We are very happy uh, to welcome you all to this great institution. The University of the West Indies, Mona, number one in the Caribbean. And here at Mona, um, please be assured that we have a very competent, highly motivated team. We're very excited to welcome you and to shepherd you along your three-year journey, for some, for some five, in this great institution. And it is my pleasure this morning to introduce to you our management team and, of course, the captain of the ship, our principal, who will address you immediately after. So right here in the principal's conference room with me is Deputy Principal, Professor Ian Moxil, from the Kendall School of Defense, um, and someone that you will see more often because he is the responsible for student affairs. Um, also, as we, as I introduce you, perhaps our team could just um, open their camera and, and indicate with a wave. Um, so we have um, the deans, starting with Dean of Medical Sciences, Professor Minerva Tim. Wonderful. Dean of Faculty of Science and Technology, Professor Michael Taylor, Dean of Faculty of Social Sciences, Professor David Tennant, Dean of Faculty of Humanities and Education, Professor Coinburn, Dean of Law, Dr. Sajida Ali, Dean of Engineering, Dr. Adrian Lawrence, Dean of Sports, uh, Dr. Mansi Akshay Mantin. We have here Campus Director for the Institute of Gender and Development Studies, Dr. Karen Carpenter. And of course, we have Director of the uh, Western Campus of the UWI Mona, uh, Dr. Prendergast, Patrick Prendergast. Patrick, can you indicate to them we have a plan? So, <laughs> um, I think our bursar should be on, Mrs. 
Catherine Park to it. Okay, thank you very much. And of course, I want to particularly, uh, we also introduce Dr. Pauline Carr, our librarian, campus librarian. Uh, Mr. Jonathan Archie, the deputy registrar. And I don't know if Mr. Uh, Pierce, if Mr. Pierce is on. Howard Pierce is our deputy uh, bursar. So ladies and gentlemen, it is now my pleasure to introduce and turn over to you, uh, the principal of the Mona campus and pro vice chancellor, uh, Professor Dale Weber, who I regard as Mr. Mona himself, and he will tell you why in a little while. Professor Dale Weber, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Stanbury. Mr. Jason McKenzie, Chairman of our function today and Director of Student Services and Development, Professor Ian Boxhill, Deputy Principal, Ms. Catherine Parkswaite, Campus Bursa, Deans, Directors, Heads of Departments, all faculty, members of the administrative team, especially Ms. Daniel Mullins, President of our Guild of Students, other student leaders, members of the media, New students, Pelicans, good morning. Excellence is never an accident. It is always the result of high intention, sincere effort, intelligent direction, skillful execution, and the vision to see obstacles as opportunities. This is a quote from Aristotle. Welcome to the University of the West Indies Mona Campus, which is your place to shine and your place to learn how to share. We have come a long way as a university, starting with 33 students in 1948. Now, in 2021, we have five campuses, 800 certificate, diploma, undergraduate, and postgraduate degree options, being offered to over 50,000 students over the entire Caribbean. Our cadre of talented, experienced faculty deliver programs with passion and dedication even in difficult circumstances. Additionally, the research that we produce at the UWI has transformed many lives in the region and around the world. Our research output has contributed greatly to our Times Higher Education Ranking, which next week we will have even more good news for you, but more then. Your journey here and your actions are the preparation for your personal and professional lives that will be characterized by excellence. You have all worked hard to get here and now you've reached the reward. The reward of hard work is getting here. It'll take more hard work to take you through. This is just the beginning. Pelicans, as you start your journey here at the UWI, I want to take three quick points from the Aristotle quote I just made. High intention. To live lives of excellence, you must be intentional. It might seem quite difficult to be intentional, especially in difficult times, such as that posed by COVID. So much uncertainty, so much change, so much apprehension. However, in this time, you can ground yourself by setting goals. Goal setting will direct your actions and decide how you plan to spend your time and your resources. You set a goal here and now, and you follow through. Deliberately set goals for each stage of your life. Don't try and take the entire three-year degree all in one day. Take it in stages. Set goals to have new skills that you've never had before. Set goals to develop skills that you have had, but you would like to master even better. And when you reach those goals, do not forget to celebrate. Life should not be continually going after goals. Take a moment to look back. If we've learned anything from the last few months, it is that life can be fragile. But moments of laughter, moments of joy, help carry us through those rough times. Secondly, I'd like you to think of intelligent direction. When we think of intelligence, we often think, how good are our grades? How good do I want them to be? I want to challenge you to broaden your understanding of intelligence to include emotional and social intelligence. What you will learn in the classroom will be of great importance to you. 
However, I will say what you learn outside of the classroom setting will be of equal importance. The Mona community will strengthen your intelligence and create other levels of success. The last few months have taught us that community is important and that importance comes out every day. The theme for today's orientation is courageously cultivating community. Emotional and social intelligence are skills you will need to deliberately foster so that you can cultivate your own communities and connect with different communities within the wider UWI community. In these communities, you will find help, guidance, some unexpected, some even unrequested. In community, you will find that there are answers to questions and solutions to problems that you are yet to come upon. But as the African proverb says, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Community means going together. Thirdly, the vision to see obstacles as opportunities is an important part of your development. On this journey, you will have challenges and meet obstacles. Yes, there will be difficult times. The question is, how will you respond? What are you going to do when this happens? Stop and think about what might be influencing those challenges, what might be causing those obstacles. This is an important step because before you can transform obstacles into opportunities, you must know what about these obstacles need to be transformed. How will I attack them? This is where your critical thinking and your deductive reasoning skills will become vital. These are skills that we think all our graduates must have, but you need to start from now and grow it as you go through the process. Young Pelicans, by choosing the University of the West Indies, you are making and have made an investment, and we are ready to assist you so that this investment can bear the fruit you wish it to do. You are now a part of the UWI community, and I welcome you. All members of our community are here to guide, teach, comfort, educate, and participate in your development. Take advantage of what we have to offer. Be an active member of the Guild. Speak with your lecturers. Speak with your administrators. Take part in activities. Choose at least two activities beyond your academia, which will help you soar to those higher Pelican Heights. Be bold, be assertive, be inquisitive, but do this all in moderation. Moderation without mediocrity is an important part of your success. You must engage as it cannot all come to you. We have to meet each other partway. The UWI Mona campus has and always will be a place where you find yourself and a place for you to shine. I welcome you as you find your place to shine and we continue to shine as an institution. Good morning, and I look forward to a wonderful orientation and a wonderful year. Thank you. May your heart find peace anywhere you come from. Could I up you, could I down blessings on my nation?
Thank you very much, um, Campus Registrar. Thank you very much, uh, Principal. I sincerely hope, ladies and gentlemen, um, Mona Pelicans, that you can indeed feel the love. You know, this piece of entertainment that you saw came to us from the University Dance Society, and the piece is entitled, Can You Feel the Love? The piece pays homage to the vibrancy and effervescence that is UWI Mona. The piece embodies the energy of the campus and its people. This piece was choreographed by Karen McLean. Karen McLean is an executive member of the Lakatko Dance Force. And, um, you know, this is a product of our university and our university dance society. Right, so we sincerely hope that you enjoyed that lovely entertainment piece. Um, you heard from the principal you know that learning happens everywhere inside the classroom and outside of the classroom. And you would have been introduced to the deans or the faculties who have responsibility for your you know, academic programming through the faculties. There is a team of persons uh, responsible for your out of classroom learning experience through the Office of Student Services and Development, you know, the department that has responsibility for your qualitative development. And it's my pleasure to introduce to you the, the, the team um, that gives leadership to this portfolio this morning. So let me start um, with Ms. Savannah Bennett from ABC Hall. And all these persons have other responsibilities outside of their Hall of Residence to include leadership, community outreach, so forth and so on, right? So Ms. Savannah Bennett, ABC Hall, Dr. Lindy Jones. Aston Preston Hall. Mr. Michael Clark is the um, manager there at uh, Chancellor Hall. Ms. Carisha Larman with responsibility for the Community Students Office. Mr. Bertram Anderson, Elsa Learini Hall. Ms. Sharina Richards, George Elaine Hall. Ms. Simone Williams, Irving Hall. Mr. Roger Bent, Leslie Robinson Hall. Mr. Mark Nelson, Marlene Hamilton Hall. Miss Nadine Spence, Mary C. Cole Hall. Miss Donna Mae Jackson, Rex Netherford Hall. Mr. Athol Hamilton, Taylor Hall. Miss Diane Bailey, Mona Western Jamaica Campus, Dr. Anne Marie Williams, Placement and Career Services, Miss Janelle Morgan, Academic Support Unit, Mr. Milton Dennis, Facilities Management Unit, and Mr. Javon Neal from the Guild Office. Ladies and gentlemen, Pelicans all, these are the persons with leadership responsibility for your out-of-classroom learning experiences. It is my pleasure now to introduce to you the president of the Guild of Students. Ms. Daniel Mullins is the head of our student government here on the, on the campus and here at MUNA, we take pride in giving our students um, a platform and a seat at the table. Our students are critical stakeholders. Our student leaders are key stakeholders in the process um, here at MUNA. And so I'll introduce to you Ms. Mullins, who will now introduce to you members of her team. Ladies and gentlemen, make welcome Ms. Danielle Mullins, President of the Guild of Students. All protocols observed, it's my distinct pleasure to welcome you to the University of the West Indies. As a part of this prestigious student body, you've joined an immensely driven community of young leaders who will energize your spirit and inspire you to work together as together we can. You are now one of us, beginning this new chapter of your life during one of the most uncertain and dynamic periods the world has ever seen. This means that you must be resilient, focused, and operate with a keen sense of self-awareness and kindness. 
As you navigate the upcoming academic year, know that you are the chief architect of your life. Draw each line carefully and utilize these years to build a solid foundation for your future. In all that you do, please remember that each person's growth looks different and there's no timeline on progress and growth. I encourage each of you to get involved, meet new people, and believe in your potential to be great. Trust in your astronomical aspirations and set foot on this journey with a centered and focused approach. I campaigned on the slogan, one of us, willing to advocate for all of us. And that means regardless of if you're an international, regional, or local student, regardless of the hall you're affiliated to, regardless of the faculty you study in, and regardless of if we see you virtually or face-to-face, -face, we, the UE Mona Guild Council, believe in you, and we stand ready to help you navigate your student experience. We welcome you as a new member of this distinguished guild of students and wish to see you grow into innovative, creative, technical, and passionate young leaders who stand ready to edify and courageously cultivate our student community. The Guild pledges to maintain integrity, be resilient, and most importantly, be willing to both be inspired by and inspire students to be the best version of themselves. We're students just like you, and we encourage you to connect with us. Let's put our minds together to leave a rich legacy for years to come. But as new students, you may be wondering what the Guild Council is. And it consists of an elected and appointed body that leads every one of us as a part of the Guild of Students. We have three main teams, the Hall Chair Cohort, the, Hall Chair cohort the Representative Cohort, and of course, the Executive Cohort. So I'll be sharing my screen now, just to give you some faces that you can put to the names that you'll be seeing. So that being said, everyone should be able to see my screen now, and I'll be showing you who your Guild Counselors are for this academic year. So we'll start off with myself as president, and that means I have overall responsibility for all the various portfolios. But let's meet the other members of our team. We first have our vice president, Mr. Niall Anderson, who is vice president for services and special projects. We also have Mr. Kiefer Denos, who is responsible for port properties and special initiatives. Moving on, as other members of the executive, we have Alicia West, who is our secretary, Kimani Shaw, our treasurer, Javon Gordon, our public relations officer. Next up is Javante Webster, our cultural and entertainment affairs chairperson, Brittany, G Brittany Gray, our external affairs chairperson, and Roger Blackwood, our games committee chairperson. Moreover, we have Kijana Johnson, our postgraduate representative, Shauna K. Brown, our Western Jamaica campus representative, and a special welcome to all our students from WJC. Um, we also have Ms. Ashley Anfroy, our Guild Librarian, and of course, our Guild Legal Consultant, Mr. Jamaic Charles, and our Publications Committee Chairperson, Mr. Daniel Watkiss. So that's the executive cohort. We also have our faculty representatives, and it's important for us to note these persons, especially uh, because you're probably very likely to have very direct um, conversations with them. So any issues, concerns, suggestions, ideas, fears, anything related to faculty specific concerns, these are your faculty representatives to get in contact with. All of them also have committees that comprise of department representatives and some sub portfolios of the bigger executives. So you may have a faculty EAC, a faculty um, games committee chairperson, et cetera, but note these names. So science and technology, Tyreek McLean, Zaria Strawn is for medical sciences, Ms. Omolora Wilson is for the social sciences faculty. We also have Mr. Fabian Drickett, Humanities and Education, Ms. Adrina Ebanks for the Institute of Gender and Development Studies, and Samuel Campbell, or a law representative. Moreover, for the Faculty of Sports, Ms. Melissa Fletcher, we have Alwain Besesa for the Faculty of Engineering, and we have our commuting students representative, Mr. Shamar Magrodo. We have one more person that I'd add here, and that's our UTC, or the United Theological College representative, and his name is Mr. Kenroy Wilson. Moving on, we have our hall chairpersons. And of course, each hall has a very rich culture that will continue whether virtually or face-to-face. -face. That being said, the ABC hall chairwoman, or the hall chairwoman would be Deandra Williams, and the deputy, Danae Hyatt. We also have from AZ Preston Hall, our chair is Ms. Janive Watson, and the deputy is Chrisanje Kodno. Then for chancellor, the chairman is Mr. Alex White, and the deputy hall chairman is Mr. Phil Mark Miller. Moving on from there, the Elsa Leah Riney Hall, or TOWAS chairman, is Philip Porter, 
and the deputy is Mr. William Mullings. We also have our Irving Hall chairman, Jeffrey Thomas, and the deputy is Mr. Javian Anderson. For the Mary C. Cole Hall, we have Brianna Edwards, and the deputy is Geneve Richards. For Rex Nettleford Hall, our chairman is Mr. Denver Pinnock, and the deputy is Tyrese Scarlett. For Taylor Hall, we have Mr. McCoy Nemhard, and the deputy is Diamonique Francis. For the Western Jamaica campus, the chairwoman is Ms. Samantha Williams. And for the Leslie Robinson Hall, Ms. Sajene Gums is the chairwoman, and her deputy is Ms. Donna Phillips. And for the George Eileen Hall, we have Ms. Rayanne Bernard and Rhoda Essien. Overall, we have various portfolios that students will benefit from, and we look forward to aiding in this new journey and new chapter of your life. As I said earlier, let's put our minds together to leave a rich legacy for the years to come. Thank you. Thank you so kindly, um, Madam President. We certainly look forward to an exciting year, you know, partnering with the Guild of Students as we deliver excellent programs and services to our new students. There's a key feature of the, the university, a key feature of being a Pelican. You can't truly be a Mona Pelican without knowing the university song. So we're gonna introduce to you this morning the university song. And um, it's a song that is very catchy and that you need to learn, you know? You know, back in your respective high schools or in the secondary school situation, people have school songs or chairs, um, even at the lower level in houses for sports day, you have, um, you know, songs that you, you, you learn by virtue of your affiliation to a particular space. And this is a beautifully written song, you know, by the late Noel Dexter. And, and, and here we are this morning, being led into the singing of the song by Desmond Saunders. Desmond Saunders is a student here at the Mona, at the Mona campus. He's a resident advisor in Irvin Hall. He's a creative you know, one who delivers music, dance, and, and, and theatre. And we're pleased to have Desmond with us to, to help us with the singing of the university song. So he's going to take us with the song first, and then after which, you know, we'll do a bit of learning um, of the song so that you can become familiar with the words or lyrics as also the, the, the music, the tune associated with this song. So help me make welcome Desmond Saunders for the singing of the university song. Hi, good morning. Thank you, Mr. Mackenzie. I just want to say to um, incoming Pelicans, welcome to the University of the West Indies. We are so, so happy to have you. Now, this song is called There Is a Light um, by the late Noel Dexter, and it really speaks to um, all, you know, the beautiful brilliance that rises from the University of the West Indies. So I hope that these words will resonate with you today and it will empower you to evolve and just do your best here. All right. From Caribbean islands, Guyana and Belize was born a university of the West Indies. Proud symbol of our oneness, of strength in unity. With vision clear, you came along to shape our destiny. To follow after knowledge, the truth to seek and find. To teach us love and justice, to liberate the mind. Today we see you rise in a light out of the West that guides the feet of all who seek the noblest and the best. There is a light that is rising from out of the West and proud bearers of that light are we. So we follow those who work has brought glory to your name, making a better world for you and for me. Now from your noblest portals, your son and daughters go. 
To face the world of challenges, to conquer every foe. We'll work and pray together, and time and as time marches on, we'll never forget the lessons that the whole are we are on. You double I, we praise you, we lift our voice in song. We let our big drums roll loud and steel pan spin ping pong. For you have shaped our lives so that we can truly say to you we owe our gratitude that debt we can't repay. There is a light that is rising from out of the West and proud bears of that light are we. So we follow those who work has brought glory to your name, making a better world for you and for me. There is a light that is rising from out of the West and proud bears of that light are we. So we follow those who work has brought glory to your name, making a better a world for you and for me. This is the University of the West Indies. Thank you so kindly, Desmond. Thank you so kindly. Thank you so kindly. I hope our, our, our new Pelicans have gotten on the tune of the song and they're excited about it. Uh, the lyrics are available on our, our, our website. It was projected on the screen. Uh, just now, we ask that you, you know, ensure that you get the lyrics of this song and um, you listen to the tune. It's a beautiful Caribbean tune and, and um, it, it just makes you get, sight, get excited about being a member of this um, um, community. I don't know, Desmond, if you're going to do a run through again um, with the students. Is that it? Sure, sure. No problem, Mr. Kenzie. Uh, okay. All right. So you can get your lyrics up and you can definitely sing along. All right. From Caribbean islands, Guyana and Belize was born our university of the West Indies, proud symbol of our oneness, our strength in unity. With vision clear, you came along to shape our destiny, to follow after knowledge, the truth to seek and find, to teach us love and justice, to liberate the mind. Today we see you rise in a light out of the West, that guides the feet of all who seek the noblest and the best. There is a light that is rising from out of the West, and proud bearers of that light are we. So we follow those who work has brought glory to your name, making a better world for you and for me. Now from your noblest portals, your son and daughters go to face the world of challenges, to conquer every foe. We'll work and play together, and as time marches on, we'll never forget the lesson that the whole are we are one. You double I, we praise you, we lift our voice in song. We let our big drums roll loud and steel punks ping ping pong. For you have shaped our lives so that we can truly say to you we owe our gratitude, a debt we can't repay. There is a light that is rising from out of the West, and proud bearers of that light are we. So we follow those who work has brought glory to your name, making a better world for you and and for me, there is a light that is rising from out of the west, and proud bearers of that light are we. So we follow those who work has brought glory to your name, making a better world for you and for me. This is the university of the West Indies. Thank you so kindly, Desmond. I can hear 
um, echoes of the song from, from Westmoreland to Tunapuna to Prague um, to, to Cape Town, you know, wherever our students are, are beaming in from at this point in time, that they are singing the university song. And um, there's an important lesson in the fact that we did it twice because, you know, as a part of the learning process, you will learn what repetition does, right? So we thank you so kindly, uh, Desmond, for sharing your beautiful voice uh, with us and for our students for, for tuning in and learning the, the university song. And we ask you practices, practice it in your own time so you can perfect this beautiful, beautiful song. You know, I'm feeling very generous this morning. And um, I want to give uh, some, well, money away. And, and, and this is a gift voucher, actually, for $10,000. And it's redeemable at the university bookshop. And this particular gift voucher is courtesy of one of our student service and development manager, Miss Donna Mae Jackson. So for the student who will first type in the chat, and our team will be monitoring the chat um, to tell us what is the motto of the University of the West Indies. Type the motto in the, the chat. My team will relate to you, the first person who does that, as to how you can, um, you may be able to receive this gift voucher. And um, Rasheen, you can tell us when we, we, we have a winner because this, you know, the, the, the song is entitled There is a Light. And there's a deep connection there with our motto. If you can just, you know, type, type in the chat, the motto of the University of the West Indies, yours is a gift of a, a voucher worth $10,000, courtesy of Miss Donna Mae Jackson. My team will certainly let me know when we, we now have a winner. We'd love to publicly acknowledge and recognize um, such an individual. But ladies and gentlemen, um, we, we, we thank you so kindly for, oh, wow, Saran Brown is the winner. Congratulations, Saran Brown. We, we welcome you to the space, and um, we're happy that you've started well by winning things. You know, here on campus, you can win things and a lot of things, including scholarships to take care of your sojourn here if you are not yet a, a scholarship holder. And, and throughout the day, you learn about the Office of Student Finance and the services it provides for you, so forth and so on. And this is why you have to stay with us for the rest of the day, because you'll get valuable information, you know, important um, messages, learning that will happen throughout the day that will empower you you know, as we courageously cultivate community here at the Mona campus of the University of West Indies. So we thank you for spending this part of your morning with us. Um, we will continue the programming with, you know, lots of sharing on critical areas that are, that, that are coming up. And so um, this brings to an end our, our formal uh, opening um, ceremony or opening session but we will continue with presentations around um, security, uh, registration, just navigating campus life, and, and critical things that you need to know to, to, to socially integrate into campus. So you cannot afford to miss the activities of the day. You have to stay online with us you know, through our YouTube channel, and it will be an interactive session. We have lots of giveaways um, for you throughout the day, so you must stay in tune and online with us. So we sincerely thank all members of staff who um, were with us this, this morning, principal and his management team, the guild president um, and her team, you know, uh, Dr. Pen Prendergrass from the West, you know, we, we, we certainly hail and welcome Dr. Prendergrass and uh, Miss Bailey, you know, the, the person from the Mona West Central Jamaica campus, or our new students who will be accessing services through the Mona Western Jamaica campus, we particularly recognize you and acknowledge you. You, you know, are an important part of this setup and we'll be sharing with you throughout the day. We welcome you and thank you um, team members for being with us this morning. 
we are going to segue into some other presentations. But uh, for those of our management team who may have to leave us at this point in time, we thank you for being with us. We look forward to you know, seeing others of you throughout the course of the day as we continue to help our students to, to um, settle into university life, to transition well and to excel because our quest is to give you foundations of excellence so that you can um, excel here at the Mona campus of the University of the West Indies. Thank you, team members. We will now move into um, the rest of the day's proceedings. Welcome to the University of the West Indies. West Indies The best in the West, no, the best in the world, no, the best in the galaxy oh, Your place to rise and your place to shine and your place to be, be? So get ready to experience the place where them call the world Welcome to Pelican Property Whenever you hear them matter about style and class and excellence that are way yeah. Academics, sport and performing arts, we get them thing they done properly been leaving our mark on the world from 19 no long till today day. I know what your turn, so welcome to the family yeah. Welcome to the University of the West Indies Welcome to the University of the West Indies for the campus To do well at UWE, just like all great universities there is a need to have a diverse student population and what a diverse student population does is to create spaces where people of different viewpoints can contend um, where these viewpoints not only contend but force you to take on the viewpoints of others that you would have never thought about before the university of the west indies provides that space for students to exercise a certain level of freedom of thought and to have ideas to contend in a way which I think other universities, certainly in Jamaica, will not permit you to Because do. we party hard, but we study harder than that. This is where life begins, understand that. A new level to reach, potential unlock. And there's no turning back. Welcome to the University of the West Indies. you will find countless opportunities for you to take advantage of your learning experience. As you embark on this wonderful experience in your life, it is time for you to seize your opportunity. Welcome to the University of the West in Louise. Shape 
Beautiful, just beautiful, just beautiful. This is indeed our university of the West Indies. Um, we continue our orientation and session, and uh, this morning we'll be hearing from Dr. Debbie Chambers. Um, Dr. Chambers is the head of the counseling unit here at the Mono campus of the University of the West Indies, and she wants to help our new students transition well. And importantly, she's going to be talking to us about adjusting to university life in challenging times. There's no question, no doubt about the fact that these are indeed challenging times. And so we welcome to the platform and to center stage, the head of the counseling unit, Dr. Debbie Ann Chambers. Over to you, Dr. Chambers. Thank you, Mr. McKenzie. It is great to be here. I love being here at Student Orientation. And it certainly is a privilege to be one of the first presenting. Um, I think um, a privilege is also a sign that at the University of the West Indies, we um, privilege taking care of mental health. And there is a recognition that there really is no health without mental health. Um, that as students, your ability to progress here, to achieve the goals that you have um, set out for yourself will include taking care of yourself. So thank you. So the first thing I want to do is just to congratulate you. Welcome to UAE. It's a huge accomplishment. Whether you are the first in your family to attend a tertiary institution or whether you're one in a long line of people in your family. So please um, use the opportunity in the chat now to big up yourself, to drop an emoji, whether it's clapping hands, whether it's balloons, celebrating, whatever. This is my first tip to you. Celebrate your achievements and affirm yourself. All right, so a little bit more about who am I and basically why should you care, right? So I am the head of the University Counseling Service here at UEMONA. I work with four other counselors and our psychiatrists to provide mental health care on the campus. We're helped by a wonderful team, which includes the OSSD, which includes our peer support providers to really um, try and create an affirming, safe space on campus where you can express yourself, where you can take care of yourself. So that's important. What I want to do today is to talk to you about adjusting to university in a difficult time. As a psychologist, I recognize that every adjustment, no matter how wonderful, comes with challenges. That's just the reality. And so it's important to be supported in this. Even more so now, as we're going through the pandemic, as we're facing all sorts of uncertainty about our communal health, uncertainty about our economic survival, um, uncertainty about what one day brings to the next. It's really, really important, again, to focus on your mental health to help you with this adjustment. So what I want you to radically accept now is that adjustment comes with challenges. And just because you may feel challenged over the next few years or over the next few weeks or over the next few days does not mean you're doing things wrong. So let me say that again. It does not mean you're doing things wrong. It means that you're living the best that you can. And I want to tell you how to seek support during this time because every challenge can be faced and can be overcome. The fact that you've actually logged on today to attend orientation shows that whether you consciously realize it or not, you know that you will benefit from some guidance. I'm already seeing people asking each other questions in the chat about how to register, about what is this or that. So I'm really glad that you're... Um, really taking advantage of community here. So to adjust to university in the era of COVID-19, in the midst of all that we are facing, requires us to cultivate courage. So I just absolutely love the theme that we're using today. It requires us to cultivate courage. And what is courage? Courage is a choice to move forward in spite of fear. 
So courage is not the absence of fear or pain or anxiety. It's not a straightforward or easy process. It can be messy and it doesn't have to be spectacular, right? Courage can look like the anxious student nervously making a Zoom presentation to a class while breathing silently or counting or pinching their fingers to get through. That is courage, right? Courage can be the A student from a high school privately messaging a tutor saying, I don't really understand what's going on. And so that student is acknowledging and affirming that although they are considered the A student, they still struggle. That is courage to be able to speak up and to say what you need and to ask for what you need. It also includes, and this is a big thing, stepping back from time to time when needed and resting, right? So this narrative that we have in society that you're courageous, if you're always pushing, if you're always resilient, if you're always shining, if you're always going forward, that's a false narrative. We have to rest and we're human beings. And these are things I've actually learned from the students who I've had the privilege to counsel, students who I have had the privilege to see overcome some major obstacles in their life and achieve their dreams. And some of this I've actually also learned from my own story and my own journey, a little bit of which I'll share with you. So as you adjust to university, I'm going to name a few courages, if we want to call it, a few things that we, you may want to keep in mind as you go through, as you attempt to cultivate this courage to thrive at the university. No, something that I often say to my students is pay attention to what shimmers, right? And what do I mean by that? Anything I say that stands out, that creates a reaction in you, a feeling, maybe it inspires you, maybe it makes you go, mm, maybe I need to think about that a little more, um, maybe it makes you uneasy, pay attention to it and note it. Maybe you even want to write it down. So wherever you are, just write it down on a slip of paper. Maybe you go and carry that slip of paper around in your pocket for the three years while you're here at UE. And when you're graduating, look at it again and look at how you have stuck through with this inspiration or this shimmer that comes up. So I'm going to, again, mention a few courages, and I'm going to ask you to pay attention to what shimmers. So what do we want to learn or cultivate as we make the adjustment? The first courage is the courage to ask for help ask for help. We all need it. When I um, started university 19, how long ago? I remember in my orientation, the theme was one hand can clap. And I've never forgotten that. Ask for help. There is absolutely no shame in saying that you need help. And so I encourage you to cultivate that courage. I'm going to, in particular, give this message to our men who are matriculating here at UE. There is sometimes a message in society that men are supposed to be brave, whatever that means, or not to ask for help or not to say they need something. That's also a false narrative. It requires courage to ask for what you need. The second courage I'm going to say is the courage to set boundaries and say no. Several students come in to see me because they are overwhelmed, because they say yes to everything their peers ask of them, because they feel that if they say no, they're going to lose friends or they're going to lose romantic partners or they're going to lose the respect of others or they're not going to get that leadership position that they really want. It takes courage to say no. And if you need help to say no, ask for it. But it is a courageous thing to realize what your boundaries are, where you begin and where you end, what's good for you and what's not good for you. So this is something I would say to cultivate over the next few years. What's another courage? 
it's the courage to love yourself. And I know that's cliche. Yeah, yeah, love yourself. Mm -hmm. We know, we know, we know. But what does that mean? It might mean following your dreams. Again, I work with many students, in particular, um, students in the Faculty of Medicine and in the Faculty of Law, who are here not because they're following their own dreams, but they're following the dreams of their family. Students who perhaps are called to be wonderful artists and dancers and be part of the cultural economy. Students who are, could be great psychologists and social workers and sociologists, but because family or because society say, well, if you're bright, you're supposed to be studying medicine or law, end up not following their dreams. So I'm going to ask you that if this speaks to you, right? If it may I bite your heart right now, it, ask for help and um, cultivate the courage to follow your own dreams because you will have to live your life, right? We have seen students fall to, um, when I mean fall, to depression and anxiety or struggle with it because they're not in the department that is for them. There is no shame in saying, you know what, this is not for me and to love yourself to acknowledge where your giftedness lies. So I'm gonna give a little bit of my own story, actually. I started university with a major in management and a minor in economics. Obviously, I did not continue with that course because I'm now a psychologist. And I started that because in fifth form, I realized I absolutely hated chemistry and could not pass it for nothing in the world. You see, I wanted to be a medical doctor, a pediatrician, in fact. And I bought the Kool-Aid or drank the Kool-Aid that quote unquote bright students in Jamaica were supposed to be doctors, medical doctors. And so that's what I thought I was supposed to do. But I didn't love it. And so luckily for me, with the support of family and friends, I realized in sixth form that I could not continue with the sciences. And to tell the truth, we never passed the XC um, chemistry. <laughs> and so I ended up at UWE with management and economics and then phone psychology and absolutely fell in love with it. There are lecturers that I remember to this day, Mr. Branch and Mr. Brown, who really um, inspired me in this field. And so I took the courage to change course and to eventually continue to study psychology. And it wasn't easy, it was scary because I didn't know what people who studied psychology did, but it worked out for me and here I am. So I encourage you to love yourself and to follow your dreams. No, another courage is the courage to heal. And this requires courage. The reality is that approximately one in four people throughout the world will be diagnosed at some point in their life with a mental illness. This includes depression, anxiety, or substance use disorders. So it's quite prevalent. Here at the counseling service, we took a poll of our clients to um, figure out from them what were the issues that they came in um, most frequently to deal with? And they told us it was depression, anxiety, and stress related to academic work. So to take care of your mental health, to acknowledge that anybody and anybody anywhere in the world, no matter what your status is, no matter your gender, no matter your religion, anybody can struggle with mental illness. And so it requires a courage to say, you know what? I'm not feeling so good. I've been down. I've been anxious. I need to take care of myself. We do acknowledge that we do have students because of their backgrounds, because of trauma histories, because of abuse, because of many things create or um, I shouldn't say create, develop defenses that have worked for them or that have helped them to survive. One defense is avoidance. So the more you avoid, the more you don't have to deal with some trauma in your life. And it has worked. 
except when you come to university, that avoidance will get in the way of other things like finishing projects on time and um, pursuing your goals. And so the courage to heal in those situations might look like calling the counseling unit and asking to speak to a counselor. Okay, we have journeyed with people through, as I mentioned before, depression, anxiety, people who have experienced their first psychotic breaks on campus and people who have gone on to graduate, to do well and to become wonderful advocates of mental health. So, again, it requires courage to heal. And the last courage I will mention is the courage to rest. Honestly, me not tell no lie there. So students come to me all the time. And when I say, you know, you might need to rest. And they say, before exam, but me can't rest, Dr. Chambers. This is a time to study, me have a beat book. But guess what? Our bodies don't actually work that way. The more we push, 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 the more the body will decide, okay, it's time to just stop right now the more adrenaline and cortisol pumped out in our bodies, the more we'll begin to forget, the more we'll begin to become exhausted or blood pressure will increase or sugar levels will increase. So it requires courage in this world where the narrative is you must hustle all the time, you must perform all the time, you must own your house and own your car by the time you're 24 You must have your IG business on top of everything. It requires courage to go against that and to say, no, I'm resting. Because the truth is, rest is required for your success. So please, take a nap, take a break, enjoy yourself, watch a movie, laugh with friends, enjoy the rain, if it not leaking and things like that where you are. Just enjoy and rest. This is part of your experience here. So let me repeat these courages that I've mentioned. The courage to ask for help. The courage to set boundaries and say no. The courage to love yourself. The courage to heal. And the courage to rest. Which one of these courages are you going to write down on that paper now, keep with you for your three years here, look back at from time to time and say, this is what I'm intentionally going to dedicate my time here to, to developing or cultivating the courage to rest, to heal, to ask for help, whatever. Which one of these are you going to dedicate yourself to? No, as always, as I've said before, we're here for you as counseling staff, should you need to speak to somebody and how do you contact us? So we serve students, staff and staff dependents, and we do it with help. We're a small um, staff of people. And so we rely on the help of our peer support providers or RAs. Um, lecturers, etc., to spread the word about mental health. But if you do need to speak to somebody, you can call us at 876-970-1992 to ask about how you can set an appointment with a counselor. We see students about once a month. So it's not a once a week thing where you're lying on a couch and talk to somebody. We're all virtual these days. But once a month, just for somebody, a safe space to talk, um, to express yourself and to process through things. You can also WhatsApp us at 876-856-5758. We also have a UE Health line, which is a counseling line so that persons can WhatsApp, text, or call if they want to speak to a counselor. And that line is 876-294-0042. Now, the thing is, social support is really going to be the most vital and most important thing to get you through. But if you find that you're going through something and the social support is not helping as much as you would like it to, do not hesitate to call us. 
we are here to journey with you through this experience to help you to adjust to the university in these very difficult times. And the thing is, you actually paid nothing out of pocket at the university um, to see a counselor because your fees have already covered it. So again, I welcome you to the university. I look forward to getting to know many of you. If you see me <laughs> on campus, if, we, if you are on campus um, these days, feel free to say, hey, Dr. Debbie, how are you? I'll definitely wave back and welcome again to the university. Big up yourself. It's wonderful to have you. Thank you so kindly, Dr. Chambers, for sharing with us vital information, important contact information as well that our students will make um, you know, great use of. We're going to be hearing from you know, another of our um, persons from the University Health Center in the form of Dr. Hilton Kong. Dr. Tina Hilton Kong is our clinical director. And at a time like this, when we are you know, in the midst of a pandemic, you know, she wants to share critical information with us that will certainly help us along the journey and um, key information also about the, the services that you can benefit from at the University Health Center. Help me make welcome Dr. Tina Hilton Kong, our clinical director. <laughs> okay. See, I bet students are way more tech techy than I am. Good morning. Can you hear me? We're hearing loud and clear. All right, wonderful. And are you able to see the slides? Are you see seeing the slides? All right, so right, so I've been given the task to say how to navigate to the university through the COVID-19 pandemic. Let me just say it's navigating. And so welcome to the journey. Welcome to university. It is a wonderful time in your life. It is, as Dr. Debbie says, can be with challenges, but you know, that's part of it, navigating it. And so hopefully we can navigate together and we are here to assist you where possible in navigating this. Um, so I'll just go through today quickly a little bit about the health and wellness while you're at UE and our aim to really help you through this and then touch a little bit on the pandemic here and there and also just quickly talk about how we'll control, alt and delete um, COVID-19 here on campus to the best of our ability. So um, the University Health Center is at Mona and at the Western Jam Jamaican campus in Montego Bay. And so, um, well, we're also how to kind of get more information about us. You can go on the website, the UA website. If you click on all campus, campus live, you will see the different um, headings there. And on, if you click on health and wellness, you'll open up to our page and you can get more information about that. And please, 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 guys, I know it looks kind of not your typical kind of fancy page, but it's, it's a work in progress. So hopefully we'll get it very interactive and that we can do more of the get information quickly by a click and, um, you know, so that we can sort things through your concerns, your questions can be pretty much answered. Right at this point in time, yes, we use the telephones and yes, we use an email, um, but we know that can be a little bit of a challenge at times, but we're, we're, it's a work in progress. So I want you to understand and to navigate with us that um, particular challenge. And of course, we welcome your feedback because we do get feedback, both positive and negative, and we try to use it to improve our services. So, um, 
it is where the how do you use the health center where they make appointments you can talk if you have questions if you have concerns you can call us at those numbers 876-970-0017 yes it's going to be busy yes we have some challenges at times with telephone services there's also the option of the email health serves at uemona dot edu dot jm we're not quite there like a ticket service like mits but you know we hopefully one day can get there so that we can sort of be more streamlined but we do have persons looking at the um, emails every day and trying to um, address the, uh, the questions concerns and of course dr debbie chambers told you about our counseling service and the straight line the whatsapp text and the ua helps and um the, when would you have our health center? When can you access our health center for the services? At this point in time with the COVID um, pandemic, we have had to, to curtail our hours. And so it's nine to three. Occasionally from time to time, we have had to even curtail it further, but as much as possible, we try to get that message out quickly. And I now know that I won't only use Mona Messaging, I will also contact, you know, Guild and so on, because they can sometimes reach students faster than us or, you know, more wholesome than us. And also, um, you know, we have ways to get through to other staff members. So we'll use our different communication channels as much as possible to, if there is a situation that we have to notify you of. So before the COVID pandemic, we actually had opened, you know, even on Saturdays, it was in 8.30 to 4.30 and we had on Saturdays and so on. So quite accessible, both for staff or our dependents and students and so on. So, and where it's the one Mona, it's at 11 Gibraltar Campway Mona. So where is that? That's like right across from the Hugh Shearer. Um, center or wellness, um, sorry, social welfare training or what they call the open campus office. So, you know, it's on the main road there just before you get to the Irving Gate. And on uh, Western Campus, it's downstairs. Uh, if you're coming from the main road when you face it, it's on your right hand side downstairs. Nice little office there too, with some really pleasant staff there. And um, who do we see? You see students, staff, and their dependents. We also see retirees and their spouses. So it's a big family. And what do you need when you come to the health center? If you come in or if you're calling to contact the health center, we're gonna need your health insurance card. Um, we're still in that process, even as it relates to telemedicine and working out those um, logistics as to using the cards and so on, but you still will need it. Um, you definitely need your student ID, you have your paid up your miscellaneous fee, then you can access some services there too. And you have to complete like an intake form, whether it is for the counseling service or whether it is for the health center service. I want to let you know that the counseling service is part of the health center, but the counseling service um, does its own administration as it relates to that because of the confidential, the extra confidentiality, let me say, because all medical information is confidential. The counseling is even like a superimposed confidentiality on that as well, okay? And so, and um, why would you want to go to the health center? Well, let's go to the next slide to talk about that. So we would offer medical consultations. We have two um, full-time doctors and we have some part-time doctors at times too. We have our nurses, we have pharmacy, we have dental clinic, we have our support staff and so on. And um, it's still um, pretty much paper-based and we are as well, you know, digital transformation, hopefully sometime we'll have electronic and so on, but you know, we're doing the best that we can. We do have that you can contact us by phone um, and we can contact the doctor, can get the number and call you back and so on. And so we have that service. They even, um, you will, Dr. Debbie talked about the counseling service and the psychiatric consultations. We have Dr. Nemi Richards, who is our psychiatrist. Um, we have oral health promotion and services. I, you know, we have a dental clinic, but I want us to really understand that we are in very much also focused on your wellness. So you don't have to have a cavity or you don't have to have, you know, be very sick to come to the health center or to contact the health center. 
yes, we have limited resources, but we will also try to address things. And, and certainly for the dental clinic, the oral health promotion is a big part of that. So dental cleaning, um, consultations and so on. We have two dentists and dental oral, oral, oral um, therapists and hygienists and so on. It's quite a, a, a good setup. We can't do every kind of um, dental thing there, but we also will work closely with the poly then polyclinic, the dental polyclinic on, um, on the university hospital campus. All right. So we also do, we have a pharmacy and we will offer prescription drugs as well as over the counter drugs at a very reasonable price. Might I say it is kind of probably too reasonable, <laughs> but, um, and you can access the, you can WhatsApp the prescription. So again, we're trying as much to, you know, make it easier for you. You may be there on your face-to-face -face classes and so on and from home. And so you could WhatsApp your prescription and we can arrange it for a time for when you come in or someone pick it up and so on. We do have a public health nurse on a part-time basis who will offer vaccinations and so um, immunizations and consultation. We do not at the moment offer the um, COVID vaccine here at the health center, but just down the road from us, about two buildings down the road from us, the Mona Aging Wellness Center. Um, wellness center offers the vaccine for COVID-19. And another important function of the health center is, and especially um, as it relates to the clinical director, is the medical exemption, or rather the medical exemptions where, um, where warranted. Now, as Dr. Debbie says, there are times that you may get into, you know, a little situation and whether it is a disability, whether it is something, uh, a, a mental issue that you had, or whether it was you lost your, your, someone very tragically or so, and it affected, um, you know, your performance and so on. All of those, it's not the end of the world. Oh, I missed my exam and so on. Those things we can, or you were sick during exams or so, we can, you know, um, have a service that can help you to get through that. It is not an excuse um, please, we look very carefully at it, and I have refused some of medical exemptions and so on because, unfortunately, we do have people who even, um, you know, will manipulate documents and so on and forge documents, and that is definitely not tolerated. Um, so, you know, if there's any concern as it relates to it, even if it before something should happen, you have a concern about a particular condition and so on, you can have that discussion with the health center. You can have it with us and we can take it from there with you. Um, and with your, we, we, we are the ones who would contact like your um, supervisor and so on as it relates to that or the exams uh, committee. Uh, so, and also anything as it relates to health, um, health lifestyle, healthy lifestyle education, health promotion, that's what we are about as well. And so we actually work pretty closely. I think we have foraging relations with the new Guild president where, and we have in the past. And so that's the way we would like to really continue where we are listening to you and you're listening to us and we're trying to navigate together our health and wellness. Speaking of health and wellness, your nutrition is a very important part, not only for COVID prevention and COVID managing COVID infections, but even for your day-to-day -day health. And on your left-hand side is the, on my left-hand side rather, is the dietary um, guidelines for Jamaica on the Ministry of Health. And it, it just shows you like the proportion of food and so on, the different nutrient groups that you should have. And on the right-hand side is a kind of typical box lunch that we may have. And you will see that the meat is like half of the portion when in fact the protein probably should be like about a, less than about a one eighth of your plate and so on. So we want to make sure that we are conscious of that and try as best. It's not always easy to have proper nutrition at home and on campus, but it's that's the idea. And even here on campus, we wanted to, you know, um, cultivate the health and wellness in all spheres of, of that, the meaning of those terms. Drink more water, 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 hydrate, 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 and hydrate with water, not waters. There are times when you may need to celebrate with a little, you know, nice drink, but, you know, and in general, you want to make sure you're hydrated with water, preferably, and if not, you can have some other kind of um, fluid, non-alcoholic fluid for hydration. Alcohol dehydrates you. Um, and also, you want to cut back on sugar from day one. And I know that's easiest, it's the cheapest, um, sweet things to, you know, and 
th those are the things that we love, but you have to really be conscious from now, cultivate that kind of health and wellness to eat less sugar. All right, you're sweet enough already. And COVID-19, let's get, we're also part of health promotion. We want to keep you well and we want to make sure that there, if there's any infection or if there's any kind of um, bug going around that we're on top of things and can help you through it in terms of information and managing it. So even on the university website, there is right that band right across. You can click and you can get information about COVID-19. They have the guild president and so on. They have lots of YouTube videos. Um, the university have lots of YouTube videos, hall activities. You know, there is lots of information around and activities to participate. And we have our COVID, not quite 29 months. <laughs> okay. See, uh, Dr. Debbie said we were to rest. And so I should have rested before I prepared this presentation and not make that typo. It's COVID-19 monitors. We have them on hall. We have them on the staff areas and so on. And so that we can have people who maybe are having a little knowledge or can help you to find further information or can kind of say hello, um, kind of step back a little bit from me, please. You're bundling a little bit too much. So it is a pandemic. And these are the stats from yesterday. Um, and as you can see, oh, the darker blue areas have higher number of cases and the Caribbean is in the darker blue areas in terms of concentration of cases. So, um, you know, 655,952 cases are, are um, worldwide, but we don't, those are figures. And it's just to show you, it's real, it's increasing at a alarming rate you, rate, you can just go on WHO this and instantly get these kinds of information if you're interested in it. It's to know and to cultivate that mindful, um, you know, calm. I think uh, uh, you have to, we have to understand it without the panic. So in Jamaica yesterday, to, um, well, day before, it was 463 cases. We have a total confirmed of almost 65,000. We have death of almost 1,500. And we have vaccinated, fully vaccinated, less than 5% of our population. We know as it relates to the control um, little slogan, we have our control or delete slogan on campus to try to help us to be mindful of COVID-19 in um, prevention and um, management. And it's spread by the respiratory droplets, as you know, sneezing, speaking, coughing, singing. And those are some things that you're going to do at your home or on campus. And so we want you to be mindful of that and to be very um, careful with wearing your mask properly. We Sometimes we have on our mask and you're talking and it kind of falls off and so we have to be very conscious of that, keeping our hands clean because oftentimes that same hand is going to be pushing up the mask and if that hand is contaminated, that's what's going to push up the mask, fix the glasses fix the glasses and then um, can contaminate our eyes, mucous membranes and mouth and so on and nose and get infected. So we have to wash and or sanitize our hands regularly and there are many sanitizing stations, washing hand stations around and hopefully at your home too and you're in your car and so on. You wear your mask properly, you stand three, um, six feet apart or two, milli two meters apart, well-ventilated rooms as much as possible. If you have to come in for a lab or a particular clinical area, try to make sure you're well-ventilated. Yes, you may have to have AC, it's pretty hot, but from time to time, take a little fresh air break and so on to, to get that ventilation going. Avoid crowds, young people, avoid crowds. Yes, crowds can be fun, but you know, the more you have crowded, even with your mask, the more the risk. So yes, if you have to be in a crowd, you definitely want to try to space and you want to use your mask, but it's just going to be at a higher risk. Avoid crowded places, including hospitals. So don't just go to a hospital to visit someone only really if you have to. This is what the situation that we want to kind of keep away getting infections. Know your medical risk. You know, do you have asthma? Do you have diabetes? Are you very obese? Do you, do you smoke? Those are some risks that will kind of put you at higher risk of getting a more severe um, COVID infection. So if you look to the right, it's all about location. Yeah, location proximity, how close you are, and the time. How long are you in that situation? How long were you in the car with that friend who was coughing, who didn't have their mask on properly, and so on? So you have to also voice um, and nicely as to how to control, even be the champion for change for, for others. 
Um, alter, uh, the alt, how do you know if you've been exposed? I kind of played with it. This as, as using alt or how to alt this um, infection and spread of the infection. So if you think you have symptoms, so if you have a cough at this stage, if you have a cough and a fever or feeling fluish, anybody who would say have flu symptoms, we're going to, you know, it's going to be likely that you have to rule out COVID before COVID-19. So if you're having those things, pick up the phone, call the health center or your doctor or someone that maybe COVID monitor or so that may help you to decide. But we want to avoid you just coming into your health center, coming into the doctor, because that's also going to increase the spread. If you have to, if you're very sick, you have to, you come in. All right. And you report to your supervisor, your hall manager, any situation that may affect any sort of health issues, not just COVID-19, any health issues, you know, just keep in touch so that we can then try to sort things out as much as possible. If you are, have you called the, the health center and they said, yes, those symptoms, you know, many times when you call, we'll say, OK, give us your number. We'll call you back right away. And as soon as the doctor is able, the doctor will call or the nurse and um, talk with you and get the background and stuff and we'll decide, OK, yes, you need to come in for this prescription or yes, we need to see you or um, uh, here's a collect this prescription and you need to stay in quarantine or isolation. We'll try to arrange a test for you and so on. So it is uh, quite a bit of interaction. So it's important that you give us the correct numbers and that you have some patience and that we go through. If you don't hear from and you were supposed to, you call back and things like that. It really is going to be a navigation between the health and uh, health staff and yourself. So if you have very severe symptoms, short or severe shot of breath, chest pain, especially if it's not during the time when we're open, you want to let your REs know and you want to get to the hospital. If you've been diagnosed with COVID-19, it's not a big, big deal per se. Like, you know, it's not leprosy. It's not something that you have to hide and keep quietly. I think that has been a problem. And we need to know, look, it's a pandemic. May many persons may be exposed. Many persons may be having symptoms that they think it is. So it's important to say and find out. Just yesterday in my private office, I had a patient who called me about something else. And it was when the person was in there telling me, past about what they had gone through with COVID. Somebody who would call me for any little thing. I was like, so why you didn't call me? But again, it's this kind of feeling that they have to keep it a secret or keep, is a stigma associated with it. So I want us to just mash down that lie. And it's important to deal with it and to be able to deal with it in an in a objective way. So if it is that you were diagnosed, you need to stay in your separate room, stay away from others. You need to wear your mask, try to get you know, ventilation, in without contaminating others and delete we can reduce the, this COVID-19 panic pandemic <laughs> we can reduce the panic as well we do not want to panic the panic the disinformation the misinformation is the enemy of this conquering this pandemic so we're university um, student staff we want a culture that kind of mind that we can question and get answers in the right way and from the right sources. If we reduce the number of infections, we will curb the number of circulating strains. You know, I think I kind of caused the principal to panic a little in the earlier spike in March. I was saying, I wonder if we're gonna get a, a U strain because we were kind of seeing cases quite a bit. But, you know, I was just kind of joking, but this, it is real that the more the virus replicates, the more likely it will mutate and form a strain. So we really need to try to keep down the infections and so we will also if we keep down the infections and keep down the circulating strains we'll keep down the hospital admissions and that sort of overcrowding and quite a scene of panic at times um, if we get at least seven or eight out of ten persons fully vaccinated we will be able to curb this infections in a very significant way. So the vaccine for COVID-19 is a very important tool for managing this time, um, pandemic. It is not the only tool, but it's a very important and it will significantly reduce the severe infections and reduce the need to be hospitalized. So is it worth it? Well, you know that uh, by some what I said, yes. Um, all the vaccines for the COVID-19 are 100% effective in preventing the severe 
COVID-19. We haven't got the signs fully that it is going to prevent you from getting infections. Some people with COVID vaccine will get a COVID infection if exposed, but many people may not. And if you do get it, you are very, very likely to not have the severe form. And our figures at the hospital recently showed that none of the persons admitted for COVID-19 at the UA hospital had been um, fully vaccinated. Most were unvaccinated, 96 odd percent, and the rest, like a 3.9 percent, had only had one vaccine. So they weren't fully vaccinated. So when should you take a vaccine if you haven't? As soon as it's offered. When it's available and you can get there, go and get one. Um, you know, of course, you're going to ask yourself the questions and I urge you to talk with others. Even right now, actually, they're in the middle of a town hall. The Guild has arranged a town hall with the CMO and so on, and it will be recorded. So if you didn't, you can all didn't participate now you can always that was the time they could get the cmo chief medical officer so those are the sort of things information is going to be there that you can access even at a later point just like your classes face-to-face -face classes wow guys that is so big you can then change and go and look at your lecture at a different date you're you're blessed um, we can also we have to have follow-up doses for some of these vaccines. The Johnson & Johnson is only one dose. It is currently available at Mona Aging Wellness Center too. The AstraZeneca is also available there. And that one needs a second dose um, within 8 to 12 weeks. And the Pfizer we now have in Jamaica, that also needs a second dose within three weeks. So once you've got your two vaccines, it takes about two weeks after getting the vaccine the second dose if needed, that you're fully, that the immunity will be more, you know, fulsome. So you can't, just as you get a vaccine, you can actually, if you were exposed to, to COVID, get a severe infection because you just got it and the immune system has not really got the time to fully um, respond to it. So it's very, very important not to take the vaccine if it is that you have COVID right now, but also not to, um, if you got the vaccine to, and expose yourself you still need to um, wear your mask and and the other precautions so the covid vaccine as i said before is a game changer the game changer the, you have to press a button and play and and clicks and so on when you're in your games we, we have to get people to take the vaccine if more people would take it then it's a real game changer so as we said covid is still a keep even when this current spike which we are still in it if, even if, if this drops, we're going to still have to maintain our, our pr protocols to, to keep protected. So even if it, you're vaccinated, wear a mask properly, wash it and sanitize your hands, physical distance, two meters apart as much as possible, remind each other nicely, not get out of my face, but yo, give me a little space now, you know, just nicely. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, mouth with unwashed hands, your glasses, your phones, all of those things you should clean, you know, take a little alcohol and wipe off. Avoid the crowds and stay home when you're sick. Or if you think you're sick, it's best for you to call, stay home, call and check us in or stay in your hall and call and check before you venture out and say, I'm wondering, I'm just watching it. Please don't watch it. If best you check it. All right. Um, and of course, pre pre practice proper respiratory e etiquette. We can't always hold in a sneeze, and we don't want you to hold in a sneeze. You need to sneeze, but if you don't have on your mask, you can sneeze right in the mask, or hold, make sure you hold it. Or if you have to sneeze in your sleeve, you do that, and also be very conscious about that. And you can clean and disinfect regularly sub sub um, objects that you touch regularly. There is no need for any deep cleaning, um, sanitization. So. Enjoy your learning time and join us as we control, alt, and delete this COVID-19 together. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Tina. Critical information for all our, our new students and we, we certainly wish that you have taken key note of all the information shared and that most importantly, you will apply the, you know, the relevant information as you seek to navigate the campus safely and successfully. I want to share some information uh, with us, you know, once more as I, well, information you will be sharing with me as well 
as I seek to give away another item. This, though, will have to be for someone who is in the campus space because it's a gift basket. A gift basket to one of our new students who happens to be on campus. If you can share with us the line, the UA Helps line, what is that number? It was shared by Dr. Chambers as also Dr. Hilton Khan. Type in the chat the UA Helps line, and the first person to do that will receive, will receive a gift basket from uh, Patmar. Patmar is the name of the entity that has provided us with this gift basket. If you're able to tell us, give us information for the UA Helps line, just type it in the chat. The first person to do so, you receive this basket. You know, my team will take your information and um, the basket will be delivered to you. So we look forward to hearing of um, the winner for that prize. We are moving right along and the registration process is an important process in the life of a new student. At this point in time, we have with us Mr. Nicholas Williams, he's a functional analyst with the Registry Information Systems. And he wants to introduce us, to, to briefly take us through what the registration process looks like. Certainly at your faculty orientation, you'll get more detailed information around this and so on. But here to just introduce us to the process and to get us on the way is Mr. Nicholas Williams from the Registry Information System. So over to you, Mr. Williams. Hello, good morning. Can you hear me? Good morning, Nicholas. We're hearing you. Okay. All right. So I want to take this opportunity to welcome everyone, especially the new students. And pretty much I'm going to walk you through the registration process and knowing your way around the registration process. So... Okay, so pretty much there are five main steps in the registration process. The first one, which is you need to obtain all the information um, that will help you to, to, to go through the registration process. So you need to know your orientation activities and you also need to know the online guidelines. Um, before you go ahead and registration um, consists of course selection and also there's a financial aspect to it but before you go on to even attempt to register um, you must also receive academic counseling so that's step two so you, you receive your academic counseling and once you know which courses you need to register for within your program then you can go ahead and start selecting courses and the selection of courses um is done online you know and there's a there, there's two parts to it when you're selecting courses you select the courses and there's also a part where if it is necessary where you need to request overrides um because there are certain restrictions on certain courses depending on what faculty what program in and such and so forth so after you select your courses and if you had needed to request overrides, then you need to check for approvals. You know, you need to go back online and check if those overrides were approved because um, this is very important. We have seen it where students come in and they register for courses, they request overrides online, they go through the entire semester attending classes and when it comes to the day, when they are supposed to sit the exam, they found out that they are not registered because the override that they tried 
to request was not approved. And just try to avoid that. It is very important. Um, once you do your checks and everything is approved, then you go and sort out your payment and your financial um, to make sure that you're financially cleared. Um, payments can be done online or at certain designated locations like the NCB bank and such and so forth. Um, financial clearance, as I mentioned earlier, um, is obtained electronically when your fees is paid. Um, it updates the system and the system knows that you're financially cleared. All right, um, in terms of registration dates, registration opened on August 9, 2021. So it is open now for registration. You can go ahead and register online. Um, but there will, be, there will be a time when the regular registration stops and you have... You, if you want to do registration beyond that point, it comes with a penalty. The date for that is not finalized as yet, but it will be announced. And usually these things are sent out to the campus pipeline. So students you will get it um, via email or other means. Okay, I mentioned academic counseling earlier. So this is a step that you need to complete before you even try to select courses online and academic counseling is usually done by the faculty you know and the information for this is usually posted online so you can visit your faculty website and you will see um, the information surrounding academic counseling for your specific faculty um, as i said before i can't reiterate this enough academic counseling is very important and it is highly recommended before you do course selection. All right, so once your academic counseling is out of the way and you, and you need to do your course selection, you need to go on to the UA website, which is www.uamona.edu.jm and you follow, you go to the current students tab, then to the right of the screen, you would see a section called online systems where you would select on the tab, um, register for courses. And it will, bring you, it will bring you to the portal looking like the screenshot here. And you would click on the section that says enter secure area. When you click on that, it will come up uh, a screen will come up for you to enter your password, your username and your password. Your username is usually your UAID and your password is usually set to your date of birth. Or if it's not working, you could request a password reset from the MITS section. You know, so these are the steps. You go to the U website, you enter secure area, you log in. And after you log in, you would have the opportunity to search for courses and register for them. And if you need to request overrides, you will do this in this process as well. After you've done everything, you view your record and make sure that everything is okay before you move on. All right, there's also some points to note. Um, as I said before, the registration is online. You do all your registration online. Um, and also remember to register early to avoid the late penalties. As I said, there's going to be a time after this where the late penalty period will kick in and you would have to pay to, um, to do your registration. But for now, you can go on and do your registration without any hassle. Also, wh while registering courses, um, the courses on the, on the system, you will see that the courses are in in sections. So one course can have multiple sections. You can have the lecture section if the course have a tutorial, if it has a lab, you know? So you, you, you might have a course that have multiple sections to it. And you must ensure that you register for all components of that course. If you're trying to register and you the course has three components, three sections, and you only try to register for two of them, you will get an error. So try and register 
for all components of the course. And this also applies for when you try to drop a course. When you're dropping a course, you, you, you must drop all components of the course. All right, also, you must also ensure that you select the, 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 the section for the campus that you are in. So students, some students are at the Mona campus, some students are at WJC, which is a Western Jamaican campus, and you also have students in weekend school. So there is a column that indicates um, what's, what, what campus each section of the course relates to. Um, the Mona campus is usually um, you, you usually use M to show that it's a Mona section. WJC usually use W, and the weekend campus um, use another um, letter. As I said before, overrides are usually processed by the faculty. And you must also note that not because you request the override, it, it is not a guarantee that it must be approved. You know, so it is very critical that you keep checking to see if it is approved or denied. And after you do all your registration, again, you need to check the registration status and financial clearance to ensure that you're fully registered. You know, it's because registration for the course is also registration for the exam. So if you are not registered for the course, you will not be allowed to do the exam. If you're trying to access the, the, the registration portal or the SAS system, as we call it, and you're not getting onto the system, chances are your password needs to be reset. And these are the numbers that you can call um, for call MITS, Mona Information Technology Services, and have them help you to reset your password. You can also email them at helpdesk at uimona.edu.jm. And there's also a WhatsApp line that you can get to them by. So all the information is on the screen. You can take it down now. And in the event that you're, you're having problems logging onto the system, you can always contact MITS to help you with that. All right, so after you've completed your registration or you, you feel like you've completed, these are the four check, these are the four things that you need to check to, to ensure that you are fully registered. So you have, you have done your academic counseling, you have received academic counseling, you have done all your course selection online, um, you're, you're verified your registration status, meaning that all your courses are there and staying registered, and you are financially cleared. So once all of these are checked off, you're good to go, and you can start your semester. So that's it. It's not a long presentation. Um, also, if you need, if while you're registering or after your registration and you need additional help or you need to contact us, you can also call our office. Um, we're the registry information system. We, our straight line is 970-4472. That's 876-970-4472. Seven two, and you can get us on our straight line if you have any issues. So thank you again, and have a wonderful day. Thank you kindly, Mr. Williams, for sharing such vital information with our new students. Um, importantly, Mona Pelicans, there are persons who are we know that you have questions, and there are persons who are online monitoring the chat who will be able to you know, answer some of the questions that you have. So if you have additional questions regarding registration, please share those questions and as best as possible to answer those. But importantly, when you get into, into faculty orientation and so on, there's additional information that you will get there around your courses and so on. And that information is critical to the process of registration. So whatever the question is that you may have, just you know, share them in the chat and our team 
will assist you in answering these questions. We understand the importance of the first year in the life of a university student. We want to ensure that you start well, because if it is that you start well, the likelihood of you ending well is significantly increased. And so we have designed uh, a program intentionally with you in mind to help you to um, achieve success, to help you to navigate the campus, to learn about um, the available programs and services, to align you with critical stakeholders across the campus, and importantly, to help you to engender community. We have with us this morning, Ms. Simone Williams, who is the Student Service and Development Manager for Urban Hall and the coordinator for the first year experience program on the campus. So I ask that you sit up wherever you are and that you pay keen attention now because this is a moment that you cannot afford to miss even a word of because it has significant implication for your sojourn here at the Mona campus of the University of the West Indies. Help me make welcome to center stage, Ms. Simone Williams. Thank you so much, Mr. McKenzie. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, new students. Allow me to um, share my screen. Can you tell me whether you're seeing my screen now? Yes, we are, clearly. Okay, great, thank you. So I just want to say to our new students, welcome to the UWE family, and particularly um, congratulations on making the cut and for becoming a part of the UWE Mona Club. You are now known as a Mona Pelican, and it is my pleasure to welcome you to the family. We're happy that you have decided to study during this year, and we're happy that you have decided to choose UWE Mona, and we want to tell you, please have all the expectations that you will indeed have a UWE experience. Now, as Mr. McKenzie said, the university has created a program for you known as the First Year Experience Program. We call it FYE for short. And FYE is very important because there are many different aspects of UWE, as you can see. So we have our faculties, we have our departments, we have our different offices, so many things are going on at UWE because we are trying to develop your academics, but also your personal life, your co-curricular engagement, your leadership skills, and a range of other aspects of you. So there are many different areas that you need to pay attention to. And that's where the FYE comes in. And as I go on, you'll get to see how FYE will fit into your life. So in FYE, we are really interested in three main things your peace of mind in your first year, you transitioning to UWE successfully, and you achieving success. And that success is in your academics, it is in navigating UWE, it is in your personal development, and it is also in your social engagement within the space. So we are devoted primarily to making sure that you transition very nicely into UWE and that you also achieve success throughout and at the end of your first year. So part of our mission is making sure that you feel a sense of belonging, that you're a part of communities, and that you're safe, that you're satisfied, that you can get information, and that you're moving through UWE well. So bear that in mind. That's the idea behind the first year experience program. And whether you're studying remotely, online, or whether you've chosen to live in one of our halls of residence, you will get the opportunity to participate in the first year experience program. So it is a year long program. It supports you throughout the entire year and it begins now. FYE is very unique because it takes care of the UWE aspect of you, 
but it also takes care of the social aspect and the personal aspect, like making you sure you have making sure you have friends, you form a community, you can get answers, you can get access to the information that you need. That's the intent behind FYE. And it's only for first years. So it's very, very unique. How does FYE work? First, you have to sign up for FYE. You have to let us know that you want to be a part of the program. And I'll tell you how to sign up um, shortly. When you sign up, you are placed in a group with 14 other first years like yourself. So that will be your group for the year. You're also matched with a senior student, a second or third year student who serves as a peer mentor, and then a university staff who is your connection to UB. So in that arrangement, you're getting peer support, you're getting guidance from a senior student, and then you have a UB staff member to help you navigate the systems and any problems or so on you're having with UE. And together, you're going to figure out first year in a safe, sensible way. You normally meet once a week for one hour. So when all of you come together, you discuss the ins and outs, challenges you're having, and have a really great time. But outside of that one hour, you're connected and having social engagements and interactions throughout. And we also focus on the academics in that. So we make sure you're working on your time management, your confidence, your courage, all of those other nice things. Right, so FYE is where you're going to get your UE life hack and also your personal life hack, and you're going to see how you round up nicely as a student as you progress in FYE. So Desmond, who sang the UE song for you, he's one for FYE facilitator. So some of you will be getting to work with him in your first year. So how will you know that FYE is serving you? If you start in FYE and continue, you will see that you're increasing in confidence. Your knowledge of you and how it works increases and you're making less mistakes. You're making friends and you have somebody who can help you to access the different support that you need at UE. So you overall, you're going to become more efficient and you're likely to achieve greater success in that way. But there's something unique about FYE. The, the main criteria is that it has to be fun. So it's always like a club. It's, it's a line. It's an engagement, even though it has such important outcomes. So you'll find that in your group, you're doing lots of activities together. Some persons might even choose to do physical outings. But there's a lot of high engagement and fun setting. But FYE, we partner with all the different offices on campus. So we're a partner with the health center. We're a partner with financial aid, which, which is called Office of Student Financing. We partner with the faculties. So we really are a bridge. So once you're participating in FYE, it's like another layer of support. So you still engage with your faculty. You still engage with the different offices. But we provide that other cushion, that other layer. It's like we are a little nest for our first year students. And so we encourage you to sign up for FYE because you're going to get the support that you need especially since most of you will now be studying in the online space. And I just want to say, because FYE is centered around your success, then we expect that all first-year students must attend their faculty orientation. So make sure you're checking your emails from your faculties and that you are following your faculty social media pages. All right, so how do you sign up for FYE now? How do you sign up for FYE? How do you engage with us? How do you interact with us? How do you start making that community. Because what we're doing this year in FYE, we're teaching you to build a community that will support you. So we're saying curating your community, be intentional about who you, who you engage with, how you engage, spread your mind, learn about you in a safe space. So we want you to curate your community and in the process, we want you to develop and enhance yourself. So how do you sign up? I want you to just take out your phones, you're going to go to Instagram, and you're going to look for UWI Mona FYE. That's UWI Mona FYE. Please click like and follow us. You will go at the link in bio and you're going to see a link for signing up for FYE. So you can go ahead and sign up with us now. If you are not doing that link today, just look out for an email from SAS, which will have much more information about FYE, again, with a link to sign up. As I said, if you're living in a residence hall, or whether you're studying remotely, you will be able to participate in FYE. So FYE has some really important new things this year. One of them, I don't want to say a 24-hour helpline because it's not really 24-hour helpline. But if you go on our Instagram as well, there is in our bio a link for students needing help. You can also DM us with questions. And we have an email, fye at uimona 
www.edu.jl. So you're able to get real-time help from us in FYE. We will shortly tell you later on how many other platforms we'll use to engage you and what those engagements will look like. But we want you to give yourself a fair chance of success by signing up with us. Trust us for your peace and work with us for your success. We are going to help you to build community. So FYE is a little community within a community. So you enhance yourself in the process. Thank you so much for trusting us and for joining the UWI. And we wish for your success and a great year. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, um, Ms. Williams. And certainly for the students at the Moon at WJC, you know that um, Ms. Diane Bailey in that space is your point person for the, the first year experience program. We certainly look forward to an exciting year with all our first year students, you know, as we help you to, to transition successfully to the Mona campus of the University of the West Indies. Now, there's some information that I'd like to share with you before we close this session for the morning. Um, we have our matriculation and welcome ceremony on Sunday, September 12th at 9.15 a.m. Please put that in your calendars, you know, place it on your phones. But this is something that you can't afford to miss. Our matriculation and welcome ceremony on Sunday, September 12th at 9.15 a.m. This is a critical ceremony in the life of the university where you will be formally inducted, if you may, into the Mona campus of the University of the West Indies. And, um, we want to welcome you with you know, pomp and pageantry. So please ensure that you, uh, you make yourself available for this important uh, ceremony. Now, we will shortly go for a break. Just to remind you, though, that uh, the, you may place your questions um, in the chat. We ask that you be respectful in terms of engagement that happens within the, within the space. We have certain expectations of you as university students. We will certainly um, do our absolute best to ensure that your your questions are answered completely, you know, thoroughly, and that you you will leave empowered with information relevant to your sojourn here on the campus. We will shortly take a break, but we will resume at, at, at one o'clock on the dot. So we expect that you will be back with us perhaps in the 10 minutes to one because we're starting promptly, where we have additional information that we want to, to share with you, um, information relevant to your time here um, on the campus. A lot of persons are accessing courses online, and the matter of cyber security is one that is important you know, at a time um, like this. There are other key services that we offer as, a, as an institution, and we want for you to be aware of those, those services as you continue to grow, develop, and expand, and flourish even in this um, Mona, Mona space. And so we ask that you return with us at one o'clock, the library as well is an important space. You know, how do you access library resources from wherever you are in the world? So you cannot afford not to, you know, continue with us when we resume at one o'clock. So we want to give you some, you know, screen time break so you can just relax for a little bit and then you can come back to us as we continue this or orientation session. So thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, or, or new Mona Pelicans for sojourning with us this morning. We are going to take a break now and we invite you to return with us at one o'clock when we will continue the, the, the afternoon session of orientation 2021.
Office of Placement and Career Services, UWI Mona. The department's aim is to assist UWI students in making a smooth transition to the world of work. How does the Office of Placement and Career Services assist students from their first year through to their final year? Some of the office core functions include self-assessment and individual career counseling, career exploration opportunities, job readiness seminars, job search and job referral assistance, internship coordination, resume and cover letter advising and reviews, job interview techniques and coaching, employment compensation package and negotiation advising, facilitating the overseas work and travel program, by way of overseas work and travel agencies and scholarship coordination. Students can benefit from seminars, workshops, resume clinics, career exposition and job fair, mock interviews, contacting the office is easy. We are located upstairs the Office Graduate Studies and Research Unit, 20 Ring Road, UWI Mona. Monday to Friday 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Be aware and plan your career. May your heart find peace anywhere you come from. Coulda up, you coulda down. Blessings on my nation.
love new experiences and new cultures and so by coming to UAE I was able to meet people from lots of different walks of life and take on their culture. I had no hesitations about leaving England to come and study abroad so UWE was the one that stood out for me because it offered me an equivalent degree to the one that I could get in England but at the same time allowed me to experience a new culture and have knowledge of a new health system. I have a passion for paediatrics, not just to treat the children that come to me but also to influence the policies on a global scale, to safeguard children in war ravaged countries and environmental disaster areas, to make sure that they're safe and get the right amount of care. No matter what your goals are, whether they're in academia, in leadership or even sports, UWE offers the environment that you can achieve them. I found my place at UWE, why don't you come and find your place too?
Office of Placement and Career Services. UWI Mona. The department's aim is to assist UWI students in making a smooth transition to the world of work. How does the Office of Placement and Career Services assist students from their first year through to their final year? Some of the office core functions include self-assessment and individual career counseling, career exploration opportunities, job readiness seminars, job search and job referral assistance, internship coordination, resume and cover letter advising and reviews, job interview techniques and coaching, employment compensation package and negotiation advising, facilitating the overseas work and travel program, by way of overseas work and travel agencies and scholarship coordination. Students can benefit from seminars, workshops, resume clinics, career exposition and job fair, mock interviews, contacting the office is easy. We are located upstairs the office graduate studies and research unit, 20 Ring Road, UWI Mona. Monday to Friday 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Be aware and plan your career. May your heart find peace anywhere you come from. Could I up you, could I down? Blessings on my nation. I 
love new experiences and new cultures and so by coming to UAE I was able to meet people from lots of different walks of life and take on their culture. I had no hesitations about leaving England to come and study abroad, so UWE was the one that stood out for me because it offered me an equivalent degree to the one that I could get in England, but at the same time allowed me to experience a new culture and have knowledge of a new health system. I have a passion for paediatrics, not just to treat the children that come to me, but also to influence the policies on a global scale, to safeguard children in war-ravaged countries and environmental disaster areas, to make sure that they're safe and get the right amount of care. No matter what your goals are, whether they're in academia, in leadership or even sports, UWE offers the environment that you can achieve them. I found my place at UWE. Why don't you come and find your place too? Welcome to the University of the West Indies. West Indies The best in the West, no, the best in the world, no, the best in the galaxy oh, Your place to rise and your place to shine and your place to be, be? So get ready to experience the place where them call the way Welcome to Pelican Property, Pelican property. Whenever you hear them a talk about style and class and excellence that that's away. That's away. Yeah. Yeah. Academics, sport and performing arts, we get them thing they done properly, properly. Been leaving our mark on the world from 19 no long till today I know why your turn, so welcome to the family yeah. Welcome to the University of the West Indies Welcome to the University of the West Indies Board Campus To do well at UWE, just like all great universities there is a need to have a diverse student population. And what a diverse student population does is to create spaces where people of different viewpoints can contend, um, where these viewpoints not only contend, but force you to take on the viewpoints of others that you would have never thought about before. The University of the West Indies provides that space for students to exercise a certain level of freedom of thought and to have ideas to contend in a way which I think other universities, certainly in Jamaica, will not permit you to Because do. we party hard, but we study harder than that This is where life begins, understand that A new level you reach, potential unlock And there's no turning back Welcome to the University of the West Indies Welcome to you, welcome to you, welcome to you, welcome to you of the West Indies. This is your place to shine. As a new student, you will find countless opportunities for you to take advantage of your learning experience. As you embark on this wonderful experience in your life, it is time for you to seize your opportunity. Welcome to the University of the West Indies.
Welcome to the University of the West Indies. West Indies. The best in the West, no, the best in the world, no, the best in the galaxy. Oh, your place to rise and your place to shine and your place to be. So get ready to experience the place where them call the world. Welcome to Pelican Property. Whenever you hear them a talk about style and class and excellence that are way. Yeah. Academics, sport and performing arts, we get them thing they done properly. Been leaving our mark on the world from 19 no long till today. I know about your turn, so welcome to the family. Yeah. Welcome to the University of the West Indies. Welcome to the University of the West Indies Board Campus. To do well at UE, just like all great universities, there is a need to have a diverse student population. And what a diverse student population does is to create spaces where people of different viewpoints can contend, um, where these viewpoints not only contend, but force you to take on the viewpoints of others that you would have never thought about before. The University of the West Indies provides that space for students to exercise a certain level of freedom of thought and to have ideas to contend in a way which I think other universities, certainly in Jamaica, would not permit you to Because do. we party hard, but we study harder than that. This is where life begins, understand that. A new level to reach, potential unlock. And there's no turning back. Welcome to the University of the West Indies. place to shine. As a new student, you will find countless opportunities for you to take advantage of your learning experience. As you embark on this wonderful experience in your life, it is time for you to seize your opportunity. Welcome to the University of the West in Louise. Gentlemen, Mona Pelicans, we welcome you back to our afternoon session of our general orientation activities. We had a wonderful time together this morning as we explored matters around registration, as we looked at matters in relation to the services offered by the Health Center. We looked at creating a foundation of excellence through our first year experience program for all our, 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 our new students and a range of other matters. Here we are this afternoon to, to explore some other critical matters, matters that will help you to better navigate the university campus and um, so that you can achieve the success that you seek, the success that you deserve. Delighted to welcome back all our presenters and uh, the Mona Pelicans, the newest members of our community. And we are looking forward to a rich engagement this afternoon. Now, as you sojourn the academy, you are going to need to make use of the library resources. 
The library is central to everything that a university does. And we are delighted to have with us this afternoon our Deputy Campus Librarian in the form of Jessica Lewis Marshall, who will share with us critical information regarding the library under the theme, Removing Barriers, Strengthening Access. Please help me make welcome Mrs. Jessica Lewis Marshall, our Deputy Campus Librarian. Thank you, Mr. McKenzie, and um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, as I said, my name is Jessica Lewis Marshall, and I'm one of the public service librarians here at the Uimona Library. Our theme for library orientation this year is removing barriers and strengthening access. We want our students to know that even in the COVID-19 pandemic, where we've had to be physically distant, we're still here serving our students and um, providing access to academic resources. So let me tell you a little bit about our core values. They are student-centeredness, service excellence, innovation, diversity, collaboration, and advocacy. And these are the things that we roll into the service that we offer you. All of our branch libraries are open as the start of the, as with the start of the semester. And it's very important that you consider your ID as the key to the library. Um, once you get your IDs, your ID number will provide access to the virtual resources and your um, physical ID will be the path that you must show to get into the campuses. Let me give you some library basics now. So in order to find us, you must start off at our landing page, our homepage. This is going to carry you to UE Link, which is our scholarly resource portal. And it's very important that you start from the library's homepage. Um, it's mona.ue.edu.library. That's how you find us online. How do you access the collections? And our collections support the entire curriculum and resources. They are print and increasingly they are electronic resources. How do you borrow? As I mentioned, your ID is your key card. You'd simply supply your ID card. And as an undergraduate, you're able to borrow for two weeks. You can certainly come in and pick up your items or you can arrange a curbside pickup. For this upcoming semester, we are open from Monday to Friday, 8.30 to 4 p.m. in all of our branches, you can actually come in and use single study spaces. Um, normally, some of our branches have group study spaces, but we're offering single study spaces only. And on top of that, how do you get help? How do you actually speak to a librarian or a staff member who can explain how to use the resources or anything library related? I'll tell you a little bit more about that, but we have several avenues. You can use our online Ask a Librarian. You can send an email, you can phone, you can pop in, you can set up a Zoom appointment. I just want to tell you a little bit about our five, five physical branches. These are nestled in your faculty. So you'll find the main amongst the humanities and um, social sciences. Science and engineering is done by the, the faculty and they cover engineering, pure and applied, as well as preclinical medicine. Medical covers medical sciences, nursing, law, law, and Western Jamaican campus in Montego Bay is a multidisciplinary branch. I want to let you guys know though, you may not be able to come on campus and get a feel for these places, but as our lib guide, we do have virtual tours where you can watch short videos and kind of get an idea of the coverage of each collection, the staff that is there, and how you can utilize them if you come in person or want to use our services virtually. I know some of you may be concerned, how are we keeping you and our staff safe in this um, current environment? Uh, as I mentioned, we have curbside pickups, so you don't have to come in if you don't want to. But just to let you know that we are continuing with our book quarantining. Once items have been used, they are quarantined for a day or a day to three, three days. They are sanitized before they are returned to the shelf or before they're put back into circulation. So a little bit about our services. 
as I mentioned, we offer reference services in person and virtual. So you can contact a librarian. You can get to somebody if you're having trouble finding the things you need to get your course readings or complete an assignment. If you need a little bit more help than that, you can certainly uh, make an appointment for a consultation in person or a Zoom appointment. Our branches, as I mentioned, are open with limited capacity. We have been following the six foot physical distancing, so our, our numbers are reduced. But you can come in and use the computer lab if you need to. Likewise, there has been a program called the laptop slash tablet loan program facilitated by the principal's office. But we are the entry point to get access. And there's information on how to access that program on the library's website. We also offer information literacy training. And I'm going to tell you about a training that's coming up soon to, to use our UELINK um, portal. But we also offer research skills training and how to use software. Photocopying and printing, exam papers, the halls of residence. And as I mentioned, the study spaces are there for you. And I'll go into a little bit more detail about those. But this is a slide that I want you to take note of. If you are not able to get onto campus, there are multiple ways to get through to us. As I mentioned, the Ask a Librarian, which is an online chat virtual reference service. You can access it from the library's website or at tinyurl.com live chat Mona, and that's going to get you to a library staff member or a librarian. Likewise, you can contact us on WhatsApp at 876-564-0344 and we'll be able to respond to you there. And if you want to send an email, please take note of reference.library at uimona.edu.jm. These are all ways that if you're not able to come in and see us in person, a library staff member will be available to you and we'll be able to, to offer the assistance that you need. So just a little bit more detail about physical services. Photocopying used to be in great demand when people were submitting um, Print, print assignments, but I know that you're uploading now. But certainly people still have research reports, theses that they want to print. Or sometimes you just want to print your reading material because you don't want to read it on screen. Your ID comes into play here again. You have a print account that you can put a balance on and use any of the self-service copiers in the branches. Or you can come to the main where we have a repographics unit that offers a wide array of scanning, printing, um, binding services. So let's talk about virtual access. How is the library strengthening access to electronic resources, especially if we're not in the face-to-face -face environment, we're more in a blended online environment. And we do that through UELINK. We do have a giveaway, and I'm wondering if anyone knows what this acronym stands for. Um, our outreach librarian, Ms. Bourne, is monitoring the chat. And so the first person to tell me what UELINK stands for She'll take notes, and we do have a bookshop voucher for the winner. So what is UELINK? I'm stressing it because it's very, very important. It gives you access to subscription-based, as well as open source resources, peer-reviewed journals, e-books, everything at your fingertips. So UELINK stands for UWI Libraries Information Connection. It is a one-stop shop for all the scholarly material that you need. And it allows you access to the collections, not only at Mona, but at St. Augustine, Cave Hill, the Open Campus, and the New Five Campus in Antigua. You are able to search and see what we have before you actually come up here. You're able to access databases, sorry, such as EBSCO, which some of you may have heard of previously, Emerald, PubMed, Westlaw, the Glena Archive from the 1830s, multiple subscription databases that the university has purchased and that at, are your, at your fingertips for use. UELINK, as I said, can be accessed online. So that means that it can be used anytime, anywhere. It's going to give you access to electronic journals. And in your research, you'll find that journal articles, especially peer reviewed journal articles, will be key. You may want to print these, download these, all of that can be done through UELINK. We are having UELINK sessions um, coming up. They start September 6th. Um, you can register at the link below. 
And um, in this session, it's a, a one-hour session, but it teaches you how to navigate this particularly important resource. Ulink actually got beefed up in recent times. It has been upgraded and it has several very cool features. It can offer um, not only full text download, but citations for the sources in whatever style that you need. You can email the resource to yourself. And it also creates full text links in reference lists. So you may be reading an article and then immediately the article references become clickable if we have them in full text. So Ulink with this recent upgrade is really a very good ally. I know that some of you may have heard that there is a direct link between student success and library use. I guarantee that if you get a handle on how to use Ulink, you'll be able to find your, your reading assignments well ahead of time. You'll be able to read widely on your topic you'll be able to really manage your research journey. Ulink must be accessed with your ID and password. Once you sign in through the library's website, you'll go into the top right-hand corner. Though you can search it without signing in, the only way to get those full text resources, the only way to download an ebook, the only way to look at a full text article will be once you sign in with your UWI um, username and password. But as I said, if you don't remember everything that I've said, there are sensitization sessions coming up. And please make sure that you sign up for one and get um, a head start on your reading and course resources. What happens if the material in the reading list or the um, kind of wider reading that you're doing is not available in the library? Is there an avenue for you to get to those resources? Yes, there definitely is. And it's something called interlibrary loan. It allows us to seek articles in um, other libraries within UA system. So suppose a, an article is available at St. Augustine, but not through our collection, even a book, or it could be further afield than that. We do offer interlibrary loan services that allow us to um, offer our students that additional reach to resources that may not be in our collection that can be accessed through the library's website. It's something to bear in mind, and it's something that you need to make sure that you have the time to access as well. So if you have a big research assignment coming up and you need material that's not in the, the library, you can access it through interlibrary loan, but you need to really manage your research timeline. Past papers are another resource that I know undergraduate students really like to utilize. We do have past papers that are available in UE Link. Um, you just type in the, the course code, and if we do have it, because not all past papers are um, available in this fashion, you'll be able to bring it up, um, print, save, and utilize examples from previous years in your um, preparations for examination. So this is a, a, a tip that I know university undergrads really like, that they can come and peruse our exam collections from the get-go, from the very beginning of the semester to see how things work in that particular course. And finally, the Hall of Residence Librarian Program. This is an undergraduate service. You will all have been assigned to a hall, even though you're not living on hall. And this program allows you to have a go-to person. So for example, I used to be the librarian for Mary C. Cole. And that meant that I was able to really create a bridge between the library and the hall, bring the library to where it needed to be. Um, your hall of residence librarian will reach out to you. We usually do it through the first year experience program. And you know that you have somebody that you can ask questions or somebody who can assist you in navigating the library's online resources, give guidance with you know, research skills or citation styles, just to ultimately be an ally for you as you start off this academic journey. So please feel free to find out who your, um, your Hall of Residence librarian is from the get-go. They will be introduced to you. They usually come and do presentations. Um, but this is a program to, to make note of, to have that go-to person in the library. In closing, I just want you to know that we do have quite active social media. Our Instagram is quite active. We're planning to have Instagram Live coming up for um, 
the orientation period. We have a YouTube channel where there are lots of helpful videos. We have a Facebook page as well as Twitter. So I, I want to invite you to join our social media circle. Please note down one of these. This is going to be one of the ways that, especially if you're not on campus, we're going to communicate with you and let you know what's happening, what services you can offer. So please join our social circle at any one of the below. Um, I hope I've been able to kind of give you an overview of what the library offers and to let you know that any barriers that you may think that there are, there, there aren't. You can get to us. You can get access to the material and resources that you need, and we are here to help you. I'm wishing you all the best for the semester ahead, and I hope to see you in the library or hear from you in the library. All the best. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Mrs. Jessica Lewis Marshall from the from the library. I want to give some giveaways now. Um, let me start by just asking you, the first person to list the, the libraries that we have here on, on, on campus, all the libraries, to include our branch libraries. Just, if you are able to list those, you'll get a gift voucher courtesy of Educom. Uh, a gift voucher valued at $2,000 for Educom membership. And you may contact Stacey Ann Porter, who is a business development leader at Educom at sporter at educom, co-op.com. Um, information will be shared with you um, in the chat to collect your, your, your prize. But if you can list the, the libraries that we have here at the Mona campus, then um, that prize will be, be, be yours. Um, for a student who lives on campus, you know, move, we'll be moving on campus and live in a hall of residence because you have to access classes face to face. We, you know, and perhaps if you drive, here's an opportunity for you to, to, to win um, something special, right? And what you need to do to win this prize is to list three halls of residence and their managers. Three halls of residence and their, 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 their managers. That's what we're asking you to do there. And for that, you will get a free car wash and vacuum valued at um, free car wash and vacuum by wash and wheel mobile cleaning services, right? That's free car wash and vacuum by wash and wheel mobile cleaning services. And they must be, they can be contacted at 876 493 5146 at A764935146. So the first person to type the name of three student service and development managers, um, where the halls and the associated manager, that gift become yours. We have lots more giveaways to give you from Edicom and um, the bookshop, uh, Pat Mars Decor, and so on. Just stay in tune and online with us. But now we're going to move into another presentation. These are indeed very interesting times. And the university space can be a space in which your attention has been pulled left, right, and center. You know, we want persons to be able to, to maintain a focus, knowing who you are and, you know, what you believe in as you establish your identity in, 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 in this space. And we want to have, you know, it is indeed a diverse space. But within this diverse space, you know, we want to have our, 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 our students own their space, own themselves, and, and have a better understanding of who, who they are. And so this, this afternoon, we have with us, uh, I call her Coach Carla. You know, our students probably call her Miss Moore, but um, she's Miss Carla Moore. She's an adjunct lecturer with the Institute of Gender and Development um, Studies. Um, but she's a lot more than that, you know? And as you begin to engage her in conversation, you'll find out a lot more you know, about her. Um, and she'll share with us under the theme, after you know more than me, eh? Yeah, I want to find out more about this. Don't you? Ladies and gentlemen, Mona Pelicans, let us make welcome. 
Sarah Moore. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Mr. McKenzie, and thank you to the entire team who's organizing orientation and big up to all of the students who are here, the newest Pelicans to join us. What is a group of Pelicans called? Tuflock? I probably should have used, like I should have looked at the junior English and checked that out. So my presentation is called After You Know More Than Me. And I just want to do a quick check. I know that is, these are COVIDian times and we are doing everything online. Orientation is happening online. So let me just see you put something in the chat. If you look kind of rough right now, but when you clean up, nobody can talk to you. Like right now, you may not be having your cutest day ever because perhaps your camera's off in the orientation. But when you clean up and you put yourself together, nobody can talk to you. A lot of people will answer yes to this because there's one thing that Caribbean people do well and it is show up and show out when the time comes for we take on the road, we're going to take on the road and we're going to win. And that's why pre my presentation is called After You Know More Than Me. Hold on a minute. Let me bring up my slides. All right. No, I don't want everybody to see all of that. Thank you. I only want people to see that. Thank you. Okay, I see people in the chat saying... <laughs> Somebody said right through. Somebody said kind of rough. And because I'm that person, I'm actually monitoring what's happening in the YouTube as well. So we're going to talk about embracing our diversity. The one thing that Caribbean people know is that we are the best, right? There's no doubt about it. We're very clear about it. So let's do a check. I want to know who is here with me. Put in the chat. If you can drop your flag, drop your flag. If you can drop the name of your country, drop the name of your country because I want to know which Caribbean country is the best. Put it in the chat right now. Michael, just start warm it up and start talk for yourself. You is a place where you're going to encounter a lot of people from a lot of different countries. And that is how we get a little regional unity. Also, here's a pro tip. If you're a UE graduate, you don't really ever have to pay for a hotel when you travel. You just sleep on the couches of people that you went to school with in the past. And also we're top five. So, okay. Oh, the Jamaica crew has come out very strong. Okay. All right. Bahamas crew in the building. TT Reach, St. Vincent. Okay. Represent for yourself. All right. Now I'm going to start asking you more specific questions. I'm going to put up some categories and I would like you to tell me which country is the best in this category. Now, I don't want you to be biased. If it's not your country, then don't vote for your country. You don't have to, you know, we don't have to rig the election. Category one, cooking. Which Caribbean country is the best at cooking? Is it rice and peas? Is it rice and beans? Is it pelau? Is it going to be the pork with the pickles? Is it going to be the jerk pork? Which one of the Caribbean countries is the best at cooking? And please remember, you are not required to vote for yourself. Be fair. If it's not you, it's not you. Leave it alone. Okay? All right. Oh, wow, 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 wow. People are aggressive in the chat. Okay. The voting for this is going to close in five, four, three, two, one, pens down. When you come on campus and you start taking exams in person, this is something you become familiar with, the sound of pens down. Okay, boom. Voting done for cooking. We're moving to our next category. The category is dancing. Which Caribbean country is the best at dancing? Remember, you don't have to vote for your country just because it's your country. We're not here to record this and we're not here to judge you. We're not going to carry out before your secretariat. Who danced the best? If I were to carry you down to the union and I took one representative and put them up on that big stage, whether you call it whining, whether you call it bubbling, whether you call it walking up, who was going to get the best dancing out of the Caribbean? Voting is closing. Voting is closing is, wow, one girl call her whole name and say so she is the best dancer. Voting is closing in five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. I want to see silence in the chat before we move on to the next topic. I want to see silence. No typing. Because we're coming to the last one. Which Caribbean country is the best? at running off. Which Caribbean country is the best at getting a single entry visa to going into the United States and never ever returning? Don't answer that. You don't know which agent is monitoring the chat. It doesn't matter. Caribbean people know that they're great and we'll fight you for it. We will fight each other 
right? There are three things that can unite Caribbean people. One of them is UWI. When you graduate, you get one of these, says alumni. It's very important. I keep it on my desk. The other one is CARICOM. Try to keep us together. The other thing is if a country try to pass them place with you. Any or another country try to pass them place with us, then it's all of a sudden we will forget that we were fighting amongst ourselves and we will just eat, ooh, eat, ooh, eat, ooh, and then we are just going to attack them. I'm not calling any names, but a certain person who didn't run a race the other day was under receiving end of the So we know that we're great. Certain things can unify us. Being a Caribbean person is an experience. These are the facts, right? Sometimes the experience, the experience of being a Caribbean person looks like this. Um, we've been in Galasco one summer. We want the cheapest rice, Marco Polo, tree. What else we can pick up? We'll pick up a flower. This rice in the side, you know, four, it's a four things. Four something. Everything is so dear. Everything is so dear, right? In these comedian times, we're doing the best that we can with the budget that we have. Sometimes being a Caribbean person looks like that. Sometimes being a Caribbean person looks like this. Sometimes it look like crop over. Sometimes it look like carnival. Sometimes kid is carnival. Sometimes you're isle dung and you're black because it's jab jab nation. Sometimes being a Caribbean person look like that. And for my full figured people, please don't think I forgot you. Yeah, full forgot people are in the fet as well. Sometimes being a Caribbean person looks like this. So Caribbean people are great. And if it's you're talking about diversity, you absolutely have to talk to us because we have the range. But the fact is, we're living in a globalizing world. We are under pressure. I have a niece who speaks with an American accent and she has never left Jamaica. The girl has only ever gone to the airport to pick up people, but she talk with that one. And I know that some of you have these little YouTube babies in your family. Put it in your chat if you do. One day them sound like Peppa Pig. The next day, them sound like Doc McStuffin. The next day, them talk, sound like Dora the Explorer. And you're wondering, wh where is the accent coming from, friend? Because you never go off her in it, right? We're under pressure. And so the thing I want you to remember is that it's actually your Caribbean-ness that sets you apart from everybody else. And that's something that you are to celebrate and nurture and hold on to. That is one aspect of your diversity that I don't want you to ever let go of because being Caribbean is not about following the trend. We are the trend. We wouldn't have hip hop if Caribbean people never move go America go live. Okay. We have the range. We have the range. What do you want? You want people to run your charts? You want people to be on the top of billboard. You want people to be making billionaires. We have that. What you want? You want Olympic medals for and like dirt. You want people who have, you want look one country where have like the second most Olympic medals per capita in the world. We have that. What else you want? You want women leaders. Do you want women political leaders? Do you want women to be in positions of leadership? We're doing it before some of the so-called developed countries have ever done it. We have that. You want political leaders, women political leaders in positions in other countries where there have never been women there before? Well, baby, we do that too. Because Caribbean people are everywhere. What do you want? LGBT people? We got I don't want no fly guy. Just want a shy guy. No, it's actually a shy girl, but hey, what do you want? Things that people have never done before. This is the first black girl to win the Scripps Howard Spelling Bee. The first, Jodi Ann Maxwell. This is the fastest man in the world. Whatever you want, Caribbean people have it. We can do it, and we have been doing it for a long time. So the question that I'm posing to you today is what are you going to do with it? We have this massive history of Caribbean greatness that's inside of you. It's not just for people who've already done it. It is inside of you. So my question to you is what are you going to do with it? And what's the thing that is stopping you from doing it? And I'll tell you what it was for me. I couldn't embrace my own diversity, right? As you can see, I'm not skinny. I didn't get chubby last month. I was a chubby baby, a chubby child, a chubby teenager, and now I'm a chubby almost 40 year old, right? I'm not skinny. I don't come from Kingston. I come from rural Jamaica. 
I wasn't feminine in that way that other girls were feminine. Like, you know, I was never that girly girl who was like, <laughs> like, I have a strong nanny energy. When you look for me, I look like, yeah, I could have probably got to war with the Maroons and we would have been okay, right? And all of these things about me made me feel very different and it made me self-conscious. And so I'd spent a lot of my time actually just smiling up myself, which is very difficult for somebody of my size, but somehow I managed to do it very well. I was an overperformer. And so I, I, there were opportunities that came my way. There were things that I wanted to do that I just didn't go after them because I felt there was something wrong with me and I didn't deserve them. And I don't want you to do that to yourself because you are too great to do that. So once and for all, I could get it out in the chat. I want you to tell me what's wrong with you. What is the thing that you think is wrong with you? What's the thing that you are a little bit ashamed of? What's the thing that people have made you feel bad about that makes you feel that there's something wrong with you? And because some people need to hear things so they can think about it, my balikalis. So start typing if you have one, and I'm going to share in the list. Maybe you're fat. Maybe you're too skinny. Maybe your whole life they have been teasing you about the fact that you are thin. Maybe you're too introverted. Maybe you're one of my little introverted babies who want to, you want to stand on the side of the party. You don't want to be in the middle of the party. You're having fun, but you just really don't want people to talk to you. Maybe you're a boy who want too much like a girl. Maybe you're a girl who want too much like a boy. Maybe you don't think you're a girl or a boy because you're non-binary and people don't know what to do with that. Maybe you're a boy and you're like a traditional youth, but people are treating you like every aspect of your masculinity is toxic. Not every aspect of masculinity is toxic. Toxic masculinity is toxic. It's okay for men to be masculine, right? Maybe you, I go back in the rest of my list. Maybe you come from the country. Maybe you're ghetto, the ghettos. Maybe you're HIV positive and you don't want people to know that. Maybe you're super tall and you like to wear heels, in which case you're a giraffe and you're afraid that nobody will date you. Maybe you have a deep accent, like a deep country accent. You have pimples, you have stretch marks. Maybe you have 4C hair and nobody has ever known how to deal with it. Maybe you were assaulted and you feel dirty all the time and it makes you feel like something is wrong with you. Maybe you have anxiety, team anxiety. Maybe you have depression. Team depression, hey, maybe sometimes it's hard for you to get out of it. I mean, seek support for that. We all need support for that. Maybe you have a disability. Maybe you come from a family who has a particular history. Or maybe you feel like you're too uptown. Maybe you feel like you're too brown and people won't take you seriously because they'll think you'll never known struggle a day in your life. And so you shouldn't have the right to talk about anything. Maybe you did third form three times. You know, maybe you had to sit those exams two times before you were here, right? Let me look over in the chat. Okay, overthinker, too proper, anxiety and depression. Okay, lots of anxious people here. Ghetto from the country, low self-esteem, weight introverted at times, right? Body image, easily distracted, can't talk properly, like my own company, too much. My expressions come off a bit wrong sometimes. And that was one I was actually going to bring up. Maybe Maybe you have one of those faces that make people feel like you feel better than them. You know the face. You're minding your business. You're just really thinking about your dinner, but you look like this. <laughs> and so when people see you, they feel like you feel like you're better than them. <laughs> right? I'm looking in the chat right now. And there are so many people who are saying the same thing because we struggle with the same things. But yet we sit in rooms with each other and we think... I'm alone. I'm different. I'm alone. I'm Mr. Alien. You're not. We're all going through this together. And so we all have things that we think are wrong with us. But I want to tell you this. We need you exactly the way you are. There's nothing wrong with doing work on yourself. But don't come from the perspective where you feel like there's something wrong with you. And you are not dishwashing liquid. So there is no need for you to dilute yourself. Come full strength and let the people them deal with you. Because... Your difference is actually your strength. Your difference is the thing that sets you apart from everybody else. And that is your strength. And one of the places that's actually showing me how important diversity is, is TikTok, right? Because watch here. Who would have thought that the thing we needed 
was a man who was giving us affirmations while looking angry. Who knew we needed a man to shout gorgeous at us? But when him shout out the gorgeous, for real, feel gorgeous. Actually, but think about this. Talking to you like them vex, but being affirming, isn't that Caribbean grandparents? Because that's exactly how my grandmother was. She would basically look like she was cussing with me, but she would be telling me nice things. Who knew this is what we needed? Who knew what we needed was a 50-something-year-old woman teaching us how to cook chicken wings and comb our hair. She's on TikTok. I mean, she's like the, the amount of views and followers that she has is wild. People want this content. We think TikTok is a young people thing. No difference. Your diversity is your strength. Pre this. Hey, so you back. Um, ah, I'm a savage. Yeah. Classy, bougie, uh, ratchet. Yeah. Sassy, moody, hey, nasty. Hey, yeah. Hacking, stupid. What was happening? What was happening? I'm a savage. She's doing the savage challenge in a wheelchair, in a wheelchair. She's a quadriplegic who is giving us classic bougie ratchet. You really can't get much better than that, right? So embrace what's different about you. It's the thing that's going to set you apart. But obviously me coming here and telling you this one thing at orientation is not going to be enough. And so I want to leave three tips with you before I go, right? Three tips for embracing diversity and being better at equity. One, don't bad mind other people. Do not bad mind other people. And what do I mean by this? When you find yourself feeling like you want to reject somebody else, Ask yourself, is the voice in my head my own? Or is that somebody else's voice that's telling me to hate this person? Do I have enough experience with this person or even this type of person to feel I know anything? If the answer is no, then go, go and hold a reason with yourself so that you can make space for this person. UE is supposed to be a place of exponential growth for you. You will not leave here the same person. You're supposed to grow academically. You're supposed to grow intellectually. You're supposed to grow culturally. You're supposed to learn how to live without sleep. You're supposed to learn how to swap ramen with your friend as a means of surviving when you live on all, all of these things. The things that the part of UE that's going to change you is primarily the people at UE but you have to make space for them by leaving some of the stereotypes and the expectations that you had of them. Number two, don't bad mind yourself, right? When you find yourself kind of rejecting certain aspects of yourself, ask yourself, is there actually something wrong with me? Is this something that's wrong with me? Do I feel that this is something is wrong with me? Or did somebody else tell me this? Sometimes it wasn't a person that said the words to you. You just kind of picked it up in the course of living that it was wrong somehow to be you. And if you can't clearly say yes, then go all a reasoning with yourself because you don't want the legacy that you leave behind. It's a legacy of self-rejection and hate. And number three, take what you need. And let others get what they need, even if it's a little more than you, right? And what does it mean? We all need space. Take up space. But leave space for other people. And understand that we are all different. And let me show you how I know we're all different. Caribbean people are very similar, but I can split this entire room right now by asking one question. Is it curry chicken or chicken curry? Curry chicken or chicken curry? Because for some reason, that is the most polarizing question when it comes on to this region, right? Take what you need, let people take what they need. If you're in a class, the teacher done said the thing already. You got it, but there's a student who didn't quite get it. And they're asking the teacher to explain again. Don't rough up this muddy and tell them, say, why you not talk to her in the office was dead, 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 dead. Are you on time? Do you have time left in the class? Are you where you're supposed to be on the curriculum? Make space for them. You're doing group work. And trust me, there will be group work. And there's a student in there who they're self-conscious because they're st they, they stutter, right? They stammer. And so they don't want to talk. They'll do anything that involves typing. 
but they don't want to talk. Don't cuss them out and tell them you're not contributing to the group work and they're not carrying your weight. Da, 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 da. Let them contribute in the way that may, is comfortable for them as long as they're doing a part of the work. You have a friend, a queer friend, and them have anxiety and you're the only person they've come out to and they would like you to please go everywhere with them because they don't trust anybody else yet. Yes, it's going to take time out of your schedule. But sometimes we need more time from each other and the time will come when you will need more time from somebody else, right? So don't bad mind other people. Don't bad mind yourself. Take what you need and let others get what they need, even if it's a little more than you sometimes. Because the fact is, we're better together. We're better together as a people. We're better together as a region. Like we're, we literally, we do like this. This is where the strength comes in. The best you is the real you. The best you is the real you. So be that. Be all of that. You're at the start of a spectacular journey. I am a graduate of UA and I can tell you it was some of the best years of my life. Enjoy it. We're happy to have you here. Welcome to the family. And if you want to find me, you can email me at mortalja at gmail.com. Otherwise, I am on IG, Facebook, and Twitter at More Talk JA. It was my absolute pleasure to share this time with you. Thank you to the Orientation Committee for having me and big up yourself. <laughs> Thank you so kindly. More and more. More and more. I'm sure people are typing in the chat asking for more, but you know, we really enjoyed your, your presentation and I, I'm absolutely certain that the students will make use of the space in the ways that you've encouraged them to, to do um, because um, there is this quest for knowledge of self. You know, who am I and um, where do I stand in the whole scheme of things? And, and certainly the university space is an important space for you to, you know, affirm um, a space for, for exploration and a space for growth and development and we encourage you to make use of what is available here for you to do just that so my giveaway is going to come up after the next presentation so i'm going to hold them and um we'll we'll um juggle to the director of security ah in the form of Mr. Norman Haywood. You know, these are times when we need to learn a little bit more about cybersecurity, learn a little bit more about our safety. And a part of his presentation will introduce to us a new security app that we have, right? That will benefit all our students. So um, please help me make welcome Director of Security and his team who will share with us on the important topic of internet safety and cybersecurity awareness at a time like this for university students. Director Haywood. Thank you. Thank you very much, Director. And uh, welcome on behalf of the collective security providers of the University of the West Indies, Mona. I take this pleasure and this opportunity to in welcome you to, the, to this most prestigious institution. Our task is to assist you to achieve all your objectives in a safe and secure manner. So the scope of my presentation this afternoon is primarily to deal with internet safety and security awareness. I will also highlight a couple areas of personal safety and security while on and off campus. And at the end of my presentation, I will introduce to you one of our newest innovation in security, which is called the Rush Alert app. Now, internet safety and cybersecurity begins with you having a device. The first thing that you need to explore this world of, of online 
activities on internet is to have your device. But if you have your device and you're not able to secure your device, then you won't be able to access anything online. So the first thing that I'm going to be talking to you about this afternoon is how to secure your devices, starting with your smartphones, your laptops, and your desktop computers. Now, your smartphone is one of your most used device because you can be on the go, you can be anywhere, literally anywhere and connected to the world. You can be sitting on a beach somewhere now and um, actually in this orientation, your smartphone. Your laptop, which is another heavily used piece of equipment, um, will have to be secured also. And, you know, mostly when you're home or you're in a lab or so on, you're going to be using your desktop computer. Now, for those of you online, whether you are on YouTube or otherwise, I, I just ask you to take out your smartphone, whether it's, a, it's an iPhone or an Android device, device. And dial on your keypad, star, hashtag, zero six, hashtag. So you're going to take out your device and you're going to dial star hashtag 06 hashtag. And that number, that 15 digit number that you see suddenly appearance on your screen is going to be one of your most important number. And if you don't remember anything else from this uh, discussion this afternoon, I want you to remember your IMI. IMEI number and how to access it. Now that unique 15 digit number, it identifies your phone on a cellular network. And the acronym stands for International Mobile Equipment Identity. And it's basically your phone's fingerprint. Now, I would advise you, now that you know how to access that number, is to write it down somewhere and store it for future use. Meaning that if your device is stolen or if it's lost or anything should come of it, when you go to report it, you will be able to give the police your IMIE number. That means that every time that device is turned on, or use anywhere, they'll be able to track it from cell site to cell site. So it would actually become useless to anybody who steal your phone because you can use that number to shut the device down and, and it's worse, it, it, it's as if they have a, a, a worse, worthless piece of paper in their hand or it can be used to track you, to track the device and so on. So it's a very, very important number. The other number that came up on your screen is your serial number. So those two numbers you need to keep. For those of you who have um, double SIM instrument, you will see two numbers for SIM one or SIM two. Uh, store both of them. So in protecting your device, you need to write down your IMEI number. And you also need when you're setting up your instrument to turn on your tracking system for your iPad, your tablets, or your phone, laptop, etc. When you are setting up, you'll be prompt whether you are going, whether it's a Google instrument or if it's an iPad instrument, whatever, you'll be prompt when you are setting up as to how to go about turning on your tracking. So you'll be able to track your instrument and, and, and um, you'll be able to shut it down, you'll be able to find it, etc. So it's very important. So you write down your serial number of all your devices also. Um, for your other very, very important instrument that you might have, it, it's very important that you inscribe a unique mark on your device. Only you alone know it's the problem. Some up and you don't have to 
pack it up because maybe you need to sell it or something. But you just have a little mark and a little mark that you have to, um, yes, or to identify it with whenever time, if, if um, it's lost or stolen. Because sometimes the, the, the thieves will, will um, turn off the instrument and have it. But if it's found somewhere and it's off or the battery went dead and they do not have the password to reboot it, it's of no use to them. But it will be still be in their position and you'll have to identify it. So you just use that. Uh, just develop the habit of marking your, your, your personal effects. Now, cybersecurity. Cybersecurity is the practice of defending computers, servers, mobile devices, electronic systems, network, and data from malicious attack. Now, while most of these devices are, uh, most of these activities are conducted behind the scene by computer technicians, and through the installation of firewalls and malwares and virus protection software, we, the end users, so some of the things that are happening behind the scene with your instrument, you will not know because those of you who are logged on to the, the, the UE platform, the, 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 the technicians at, at MITS are behind the scene and they would have already installed firewalls and malwares and whatever to protect the system, right? But sometimes end users, end users can, because end users are not aware of certain, certain um, gaps in the system, they will unwittingly allow um, malicious wear to get on the system. I'm going to show you how to prevent that from happening. But for your personal instrument, from your personal devices you have got to protect it when you're online so these are some some online safety tips and the first one is to use hard to guess password do not use your favorite pet your birthday your friend birthday your initial etc do not use those type of password because those are what uh, the, 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 the thieves, the cyber thieves, are going to try first. They are going to start using the things that um, they believe you would have used. So most, most sites will prompt you as to how many digits or, or, or you should use in, in your, in your, in your um, how many characters. I mean, you should use in developing your, your, your password. And the more you use, it's the safer. But it's not only using uppercase or lowercase. It's a mixture of uppercase and lowercase numbers and symbols. Those are what makes your password hard to guess. Right, so you you have to develop the habit because you know you 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 are going to be writing thesis, you're going to be um, doing business online, whatever. And if you do not develop the habit of using hard to guess password, then you're going to be easily easily targeted. Um, you have people who have been. The target of cybercrime for so 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 often you wonder why and it's sometimes it's a password that they use never share password with anyone that's a no-no under no circumstances and if you get the slightest hint that your password may be compromised you need to change it immediately ensure that you change it if you if, if you just feel that your password is compromised, you need to change it. And you also need to use antivirus software and firewalls and keep them up to date. You need, they need to be updated, right? 
um, some when you when you buy them, you might get a year um, coverage from them, and then they, they prompt you for update. You just do the update at all time. Uh, don't open emails or attachments from unknown sources, because I'm going to introduce you now to another uh, a, a, a cyber offense that is very very prevalent. All right, we'll get to that shortly. Now. Now, how to avoid uh, uh, becoming a victim, right, uh, on, on, on the internet. Now, your digital footprint stays on the internet forever. And your digital footprint is whatever you do. Sites you visit, things you post, etc. Whatever you post is a reflection of you, right? People searching for you on the internet, they, they sometimes look at your whole profile. The sites you have visit, what you have been posting, what you have been reposting, what you have looked at, etc. Et so your digital footprint forms a part of your background check. So even when you have graduated and um, is in the world of work, people are going to use your Facebook post, your Instagram post, and whatever it is that you were posting from the time you became a member of any social media platform group. And those are going to form a part of your background checks. So it's very important that you'll be very smart in what you post, the sites you visit, what you repost. Avoid taking, storing, or sending compromising picture of self or anyone over the internet, you could be charged for a cyber crime. So here you are, minding your own business, and a friend sent you a picture of someone they had taken in a very compromising position. Maybe it's a nude picture. Um, maybe it's a picture of someone engaged in sexual activities, etc. And it comes on, it popped up on your laptop or on your phone. What do you do? Now, you can either delete it right away or you could report it. Now, the first option is to delete it. Now, if, if because what happened is Everything that is sent on the internet or each, each, each device has an IP address. That's how things are tracked, right? They use back the IMIE number and they use the, the, the IP address to track data across cyberspace. Now, if a, if a, if a cybercrime investigator is... Is, is tracking uh, certain pictures or certain events then. And they see where it, it, it reach your IP address. But they realize that you did not resend it. You did not commit an offense. You could not be charged for an offense by just receiving uh, certain pictures or event that, that, that stand amount to a cyber crime if you do not resend it. It's when you resend it, that's the time you commit the offense. So just getting pictures on your phone and deleting them and refraining from sending them does not constitute a cyber crime. What constitutes the crime is when you repost. Now, things like cyberbullying are... Uh, cyber threat, they are all crime. Cyberbullying and cyber threat is a crime. So um, persons who go around bullying people online and stalking them online and stuff like that, you know, um, while, while others have the, while you have the option to block persons from, from, from contacting you, 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 you should always Go for those options, whether it's on Facebook or, or, or WhatsApp or wherever you, wherever you go. 
you can block people. So it's always good to do that early if you see that someone is, is bullying you or threatening you or whatever, right? So if you receive, as I said earlier, pornographic material, do not resend because it's the resending that constitutes a crime. Now, earlier, I, I mentioned that you should not resend. Um, you, should not, you should not open certain attachment from certain places or from places unknown because of the cybercrime called phishing. Now, phishing is a type of social engineering where an attacker sends a fraudulent message designed to trick the victim into revealing sensitive information to the attacker or to deploy malicious software on the victim's infrastructure like ransomware. And you probably would have heard on the news where people, um, uh, if, even internationally, even big banks, um, companies earlier this year, uh, a major pipeline in the United States was shut down by, 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 by a ransomware hacker who demand millions of dollars paid to them in bitcoins for them to um, release the code so that the, the, the lines could be reopened. Now, those are the, 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 the multi-million dollar crime. But the simpler ones are, is where someone send a ransomware to your phone and lock it down, or your computer and lock it down, simply lock it down. And you get a text message because they control your phone now. When they take it away from you, they control it. So you will get a text message that says um, for you to get the, the key to open back your system, you need to deposit X amount of money to this bank account online. And that's when you, are, you, you get caught. Now, how do these um, phishing um, tricks work? How does it work? It begins sometime with a letter. And I'm going to give you a couple of examples. Because it's very important, it's becoming very common. Right? So here you are online doing your business. And you see a letter um, from somewhere that you did business with. Because they normally would have... Um, they would have been tracking you. Or sometimes they're not even tracking you, but they, they, they know the address, the, the, the address of the place that you, you, you normally work, you work or you do business with. For example, UWI. For those of you who are going to be using the UWI platform, or the letter could come from a banking institution, or it could come from an insurance company or from Amazon. You think of all the places that you have done business with. And the letter is going to be normal. So it will have the, 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 the logo of the company, the letterhead of the company. And it will say, dear customer, or your name will be there because they would have known your name. And the letter would be a simple letter. We have discovered that you have been using more data than was allotted to you. Like for those of you who are going to be um, using UA platform, a letter might come to say, we have noticed that you have been using more data that, than was allotted to you. To request additional storage, click the link below. Simple. And you, they provide you with a link. That's where the malware or the ransomware, that's where it, that, that's, that is where that, that link that is where it is stored. So you click that link, and right away, the malware does not only infect your instrument, it can also infect the system that you're on. So if you are working at a bank or an insurance company or so, and you are using one of their computer at work, and 
you basically click on one of these attachments that contains the ransomware. What you're literally doing is letting these criminals into the system to um, steal data or to lock the system down, right? Other examples, you're on your phone and all of a sudden you see a, a pop-up or something that say you have one, click here to claim your price. No, you didn't buy anything. Or even if you're a customer with the particular company, there was one going around the other day from Digicel. Digicel and, and Flow always have prizes and so on going. But you did not enter. And that's not how they are going to contact you either. Right? They are not, that's not how they are going to contact you. Right? So don't, don't, don't go clicking around and or downloading um, file, whatever that you are, are experiencing pop up windows. And they're very, very dangerous. And basically, it allow ransom system, which will um, create some serious damage. So you have to remember. Now, online security continues in that one of the things that you need to do very often is to back up your, your computer and external drives. So all of you need to have some form of external drive or you could back up in the clouds or you could send your documents to yourself. Um, one of the most difficult thing to deal with is after you have spent hours completing a paper and the, the instrument that you are working crash or something goes wrong and you didn't get to save. Um, and because you're going to be doing a whole lot of online activities now with the, with the COVID um, pandemic out there, a lot of your classes are going to be online, etc. You have to develop the habit of saving often, backing up your, your work, saving in the cloud, saving in uh, using external um, drives, etc. And, and, and emailing um, your work to yourself so that you can download them from a different time. And there, and there are other tools out there that you can explore uh, that are genuine. Never share your online joining instructions and password with anyone. Each person who should legitimately in the meeting or the classroom, etc., will get their own joining instruction. So whenever time you are sent an instruction, whether it's going to be a Zoom meeting, a Teams meeting, uh, whatever the, the, the platform is going to be, don't share your joining instructions with other persons. It's, it's very important that you, you keep your joining instructions to yourself. The, 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 the um, ID that's sent to you. Because if you develop the habit of sharing your joining instructions, what is going to happen is that people who shouldn't be in, in the meeting are going to get in. And this person might share with other persons, and then you might find that your, your meeting is taken over by persons who shouldn't be there, and so on. So it's very important that you, you remember those. Uh, in terms of banking, most, most of your banking is going to be online now. A lot of the banks are physically closing, and you're going to be you will have to be, 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 be doing a whole lot of your business, probably 90% 90, 90 or more of your business is going to be done online. So it's very important that you, you keep your banking card, your, your credit card, your PIN, and your password very safe. Don't, don't share. Never send anyone to the ATM with your card. I've had to deal with a couple of cases like these where you thought that the person you're sending to the ATM with your card was the most honest person in the world, only for you to be losing cash after that. So never send anyone to the ATM with your card.
Avoid going to the ATM alone at night, right? If you can um, ensure that you transact your business at areas or where, where, where it's not too lonely or in the night. I, I can't think of any good reason why anybody would get up, in, get up out of their bed in the night, 2 o'clock, 4 o'clock, and go to the ATM by themselves. It's just crazy. Or, always check for hidden scanning devices and cameras in ATMs before inserting your card. Develop the habit of when you go to the ATM, you just run your finger along the slot. And if you find anything protruding, anything dangling, anything that shouldn't be there, and if when you're pushing your card in, it's, it's coming up on resistance, then don't force it. Just avoid using that machine. Right? Or if you find anything at all that shouldn't be there, anything dangling, it could be one of those devices. And even when it's you're alone in the mash in the in, in the ATM, still cover your pin while you're entering it. Because sometimes um, these cameras they they play some very, very, very minute cameras at different um, areas of the, the ATM machine and they sit down and remotely monitor what you are putting in. Avoid taking, storing, or sending with that already, compromising picture of self or anyone over the internet you could be charged for this. It's so important that I had to repeat it there. Now, in terms of personal safety and security, you need to develop a good understanding of your environment from time to time. Um, those of you will be coming on campus to... to um, reside or to transact business, just try to understand where the campus is situated, where the gates are, where the entrance and the exit points are, and which way to turn your vehicle when you're coming out or coming in so you don't get lost and end up in certain, in certain communities. Take only official mode of transportation. So if you are going to use public transportation to come on campus, Take only those that are red plate, the red plate taxis. Um, they are the ones that we recommend. And UE has also been vetting some of these public transportation, the taxis, especially the taxis. And we have issued some sticker. Um, you will see the UE sticker mark on there, right? So they are, those are the ones that we recommend. Always inform a, a close friend or relative of your whereabouts. And that, that bullet point about informing a close friend or relative is, got, it, is already, it, it has incorporated in the Rush Alert app that well, I'm going to be um, introducing to you shortly. Avoid exploring strange places alone. Report sexual harassment, assaults, or threats. Do that immediately because there is zero tolerance on campus here for sexual harassment, assault, or threat. Never take your personal safety and security for granted and download the Rush Alert app. Now, the Rush Alert app, and um, I'm going to ask the, the technicians to have it ready uh, because I'm at the end of my presentation now, and um, the, the next thing on, on, on your agenda is the Rush Alert app. But the, the Rush Alert app, was developed by UE students, for UE students. It is a very innovative uh, piece of uh, added security because the university has your security and your interests at heart. So what you find is that the UE, the management of, univer of university is always looking at ways, new ways, to ensure that our students are safe. So the Rush Alert app, which is coming up right now, is aimed at providing you with some form of a online notification. It, 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 it places you in a position of, of comfort knowing that someone, one of your friends, 
or the campus police officers when you're on campus here will be able to come to your assistance with just a, 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 within a moment notice, right? So you would you download this app and you 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 also add a couple of your close friends who will be able to keep in touch with you when you are you know leaving your your one from one location to the other um you will know they will know when you are when you have arrived and if you if you have not arrived within a particular time then they will get a notification and you could call them and if you don't get them then you can alert the authorities that you know hey my friend who left the library and was walking um, down to a particular uh, resident should have been there 10 minutes within 10 minutes um, and and I've not seen her or seen him and um, you know it, they're not answering a notification because sometimes the, 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 the speed at which something is reported is basically the difference between um, something getting out of control and something being cauterized, right? So it's very important that you download this app and you, it's best to have it and don't have to, to use it than to need it and don't have it. So um, with that said, remember your personal safety and security begins with you. And so um, at the end of my presentation now, and the, so the Rush Alert app will be coming up shortly thank you very much it's a pleasure as usual and enjoy your stay at the university thank you welcome i am dale weber pro vice chancellor and principal of the university of the west indies mona campus the safety and security of all our students and staff is of paramount importance to us here at the campus so as you traverse the 650 acres we want you to be as safe as possible we are pleased, therefore, to roll out Rush Alert, a brand new app created by four innovative students supported by the university, which will help to increase the security on campus. We have tested it and over a number of months have come to realize that it works extremely well. I therefore recommend that you download this app, go to the Google Play Store or the App Store, take it on board. Thank you. Welcome to the University of the West Indies Mona Campus. My name is Norman Haywood and I'm your Director of Security. I'm here to endorse the Rush Alert app. It's a very innovative security solution that adds an extra layer of security for your personal safety while on campus. It's user-friendly and it's easy to download on any of your devices. All you have to do is to download this app and you can activate or deactivate as you need because it's a non-intrusive security solution that you can use at your convenience. I believe it's best to have it and you don't need to use it than to need its use and don't have it. Remember, your security begins with you. Thank you. To retain anything more tonight, so I'm gonna call it tonight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I didn't wear bad. Mm. I mean, I'm good though. Probably running for another hour or so. Okay. But unless you want me to walk with you. No, I'm alright. I have Rush Alert app. Rush Alert? What that? You download the app? No, you need to download the app right now. Rush Alert is basically just a campus security app that students and staff can use to move across campus safely. Mm. It has some really really cool useful features like right now i'm about to use the trips feature trips feature yes the trips feature <laughs> okay <laughs> i use it all the time i mean all you have to do is put in where you're going put mm -hmm. in where you are and how long you think it's gonna take you to get there and so like right now yeah. if i put in 10 minutes to rex mm -hmm. right 
in 10 minutes, the app is going to send me a message and ask if I'm okay. If I don't respond after three prompts, then it's going to send a message to my emergency contact that I might be in danger. And it will also contact campus security so that they can come looking for me. Oh. And like, oh, you know, like walk. <laughs> you can just use the escort service when you're ready to come down. Yeah, but I don't have no space on my phone for that. Plus... I can just message you. Yeah, but if you had the app, it would just tell you when I'm there. Anyways, I'm leaving. I have to be up early tomorrow, so. Yeah, but I can sure you know I'm following. I can just follow you. Know. No, I'm good. I rush alert. All right, fine. Bye. Later. Yeah, cool, cool. Who wanna no message me back? How much time message her? Can I reach Rex all now? Yeah. You know see me call you? Like, you know you sung it? Yeah, long time. And notified my emergency contact that I was safe. You see, if you just have the app, so you I get a notification. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to download the app. Download the app. But in on space. <laughs> Yo. I'm going to download the app for real and try the escort feature because... I just somebody pass and it not look too right. Alright, well, good. And add me as an emergency contact so I know when you reach. Alright, let's. Alright, boom. App Store. Rush alert, alright, cool. Download. Alright, signing in with Gmail account. Okay. First name, last name, Yuimona. Country, it's on six. Now to activate this thing. Organization ID. Ah, that must be the UID. My organization, UIMONA. And activate. Oh, that was easy. Now to add Mona. Emergency contact. All right. It's quite service time. Request done. That was easy. This app actually works. Hey, them just reaching out. The app actually works. I told you, no, no, when you reach home, sir. All right, cool. Security is everyone's business. The Rush Alert app was created by UE students who saw an opportunity to leverage technology to keep our students and staff safe. That being said, you could say it was created by one of us for all of us. The Rush Alert app puts campus security in a better position to keep us safe when we need it most. Download now. Let's get about the business of learning. Thank you very much, um, um, Director Haywood, for that very, very informative presentation. And certainly, students, we encourage you to move swiftly to download the Rush Alert app. In fact, for the first three persons to indicate the name of the app having downloaded, same, um, just relate, same in the chat, and we will offer you uh, each a voucher for $2,000, courtesy of Edicom. Edicom is a financial institution right here on campus, both here and at WJC. Edicom Cooperative Credit Union. Um, you can access information for them at www.educocomco-op.com. Right, the information will be posted in the chat how to access them. But yes, you can win these gift vouchers if you just indicate the name of the, the, the app that we, we shared with you just now and um, demonstrate evidence that you've actually downloaded the application. We will move swiftly on to other areas that we're sharing on. We're coming close, close to an end of the program, but we 
must provide you with information that you need to navigate the space. And so at this point in time, Mona Pelicans, I want to introduce to you our chaplaincy services. We have a number of chaplains here on the campus as we seek to attend to the holistic development of our students. So, you know, your spiritual, psychological um, needs are, are, are needs that you want to attend to as well. And we have a, a team of qualified persons spanning a range of denominations who serve you all so well. And it's my pleasure to introduce to you um, the, the presenter for today. She's actually the Methodist chaplain, um, Reverend Dr. Karen Durant Matsweeney, who will be sharing with us critical information regarding all our chaplains and the chaplaincy services. So help me make welcome at this point in time, Reverend Durant Maxuini, over to you. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Mr. McKenzie, and thanks to the orientation committee for including us in this um, orientation session this afternoon. So I'm going to share my screen as I have a PowerPoint presentation that will Yeah, so the, the chaplains at the university, we have an office that we generally um, operate from. Because of the COVID, we are not physically in the office all of the time at the moment. But the office is located on the Ring Road. This, um, it's located on the Ring Road between the Jamaica National Bank and Little Caesars. So as you can see the pictures there, Little Caesars, JN and this space right through here is where you go to the chaplain's office. Okay, the chaplains, who are chaplains? So the chaplains are appointed by their faith communities. They are pastors appointed by their faith communities or sometimes leaders. And we provide spiritual, emotional and pastoral care for all stakeholder groups on the campus. And there are several chaplains, as was mentioned previously, and these are the denominations that are represented. So we have eight chaplains, Anglican, Baptist, Methodist, Moravian, Pentecostal, Roman Catholic, Seventh-day Adventist, and United Church. Now, for the chaplaincy team, we have a vision that, guide, um, that guide, guides us, and the vision is to create an environment in which you, we staff and students consistently engage in ethical behavior, live and work harmoniously with others, cope successfully with the uncertainties of life, and feel spiritually fulfilled. And then we have our mission. Our mission is to facilitate the holistic development of UV staff and students through the offering of creative, uplifting, vibrant, and contextually relevant social and spiritual programs services, trainings, and policies. So we, we work with both staff and students. So these are the chaplains. We have the Anglican chaplain is Reverend Kellen Gart Minot, Baptist chaplain, Reverend Karen Curlew. And this is, uh, I'm the Methodist chaplain. Then we have the Pentecostal chaplain, Reverend Dr. Stevenson Samuels. The Moravian chaplain is Reverend Nielsen Waite and the Roman Catholic chaplain, Reverend Father, Father Peter Hunter. And then we have the Adventist chaplain, Pastor Omar Oliphant, and the United Church chaplain, Reverend Verna Cassell. So these are, it's the, that's the team of us who work. So what do we do? We are available round the clock to provide compassionate support to members of the campus community. Um, irrespective of denomination, denomination or belief. So we don't really, it doesn't matter if your denomination doesn't, is not listed there as having a chaplain, we don't, dis, we don't um, discriminate. You know, any one of us can still 
um, in contact with you, even if you have no, you don't have any religious affiliation, but you need to speak to someone, we still would see you. We serve as spiritual representative on the um, UE Ethics Committee. Committee. We also serve as role models and mentors to students and staff. We officiate at certain e at events that are events held such as weddings, funerals, baptisms, um, other celebratory services. We also offer social, spiritual, and emotional support such as grief counseling. If, if a person, you have a death in your family or so and you need someone to talk to, we offer that or or counseling, any other pastoral counseling for any other um, issue that you may need to talk to someone about. We also lead worship services at a chapel um, every Sunday. And these services are held every Sunday. Um, because of COVID, we have not necessarily been having all of them. The Anglicans have still been having services in the chapel, but um, not the other denominations in the past year, we have not had face-to-face -face services. Um, because of the COVID regulations, but these are the times normally we would have service. The Anglicans have every Sunday at 7 a.m. And then there's a 9.15 service every Sunday. So there's a 7 a.m. service every Sunday. Then there's one at 9.15. The 9.15 one is a different denomination each week. So every first Sunday, the Methodists. Every second Sunday, the United Church. Third Sunday, we have the Baptist at 9.15 and the Pentecostal at 11.15. And then we have, on the fourth Sunday, we have the Moravian. And then every Sunday evening at 6 p.m., there's Roman Catholic service. So those are the normal schedule for the services. Your respective chaplains would communicate with you as to, well, in light of COVID regulations and so on, the changes there. But that's the normal schedule. We also conduct seminars values, morals, and ethics training and seminars, and we assist the university with policy development. Now, normally when chaplains are chosen, these are some of the attributes you would find of chaplains, ability to care for persons who are experiencing challenges in their lives, the ability to offer spiritual guidance through a particular faith tradition, the ability to articulate ethical and religious information to stakeholders of the institution, the ability to lead and coordinate prayer and other spiritual activities, possess strong oral public and written communication skills, possess strong pastoral and spiritual counseling skills, possess administrative skills and logistical and strategic planning experience in the religious sector as well as the wider community. So. Um, so these attributes help to help us to perform the various duties and responsibilities that, and the ministry that we perform on the campus. A genuine love and concern for people, energetic and enthusiastic about working with students, staff, and other stakeholders from a wide variety of religious and civic backgrounds, and comfortable supporting the faith and practice of a diverse community commitment to and skill in fostering community and collaboration among diverse constituencies. Um, so the chaplains usually would have some experience in theology, counseling, um, or pastoral care. Now, our core values, we operate with the acronym CARE GRIP, and each letter in that acronym stands for something. So C, confidentiality. We have accountability, respect, empathy, gender neutrality, religious inclusivity, integrity, and professionalism. So these would be the core values that guide the chaplaincy team. So who do we support? We support students, we support staff, and others, okay, such as alumni of the university or members of major committees of the university. So um, all these are the groups of persons that we that receive support from the, the chaplaincy team. And as you notice, not only like, like staff you see here, you we staff and they're immediately family members. So you know, as a member of the university community, it might be a family member that needs support. 
Um, and, and so we also offer that as well. And also retirees of the university. So how can the chaplains be conducted, contacted? Sorry, there is um, our, the numbers there. Also, there's an email for the chaplain's office, um, which, as I said, it's, I spoke about the location, but because of COVID, we may not be there physically necessarily, but um, I will show you also other means of contacting us. We can also be contacted on social media. So we also on social media, um, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. So we can also be contacted on social media. And then there's, we have our personal contact information as well. This is made available through a brochure. And we have the office hours. The office hours are the hours where we would normally be in the chaplain's office. But um, even if we are not there physically, we are still available during these times to offer counseling and we can be reached during those times um, by through our through the social media or through email. So we have Canon Minot, his contact information and his office hours are usually Wednesdays from one to four. Reverend Curlew, her office hours are Mondays four to five. Um, I my office hours are Wednesdays four to six. Then we have Reverend Dr. Stevens Samuels. His office hours are Thursdays 1 to 3. Reverend Waite, his hours are Fridays 9 to 11. Reverend Father Hunter, his hours are Thursdays 3 to 6. Pastor Oliphant, his Tuesdays 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. And Reverend Castles, Verna Castles, her hours are Fridays 2 to 4 p.m. So these are, you know, just our information. So thank you there very much. We are available to serve you. And so you can feel free to contact us. As I said, the respective chaplains would contact you and share other information with you. A, a, a number of us, we have WhatsApp groups as well. So they would contact you each, you know, each chapter will contact you and will share with you other information. So thank you very much and welcome to the university and all the best in your time at the university. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much, um, Reverend and um, students. We are coming to the end of our program. One final presentation to go, but I need to be able to give away some things just before we move on to that final presentation. Um, I, I, I want to give something to a student who is from um, Tobago, you know, and uh, if you can list five of the contributing territories to the U of Limona, then here you are with a gift from Zips. This is for a, 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 a Tobagonian. A gift from Zips in Tobago, yes. Um, this is something that I'm sure you can, you can enjoy as a Tobagonian. You'll be you know, perhaps familiar with, with, with Zips. We will share the, the contact information with Zips for you in the chat so you can benefit from that as well. But list the number of requested five contributing territories to the UWI Mona. And uh, a prize from Zips is, is, is certainly yours. Here we go now. Uh, one more question. Can you list any three chaplains and their associated denomination? We know they serve the community broadly as, um, as, as chaplains, but if you can list any three chaplains and their denomination, a gift voucher from Edicom will certainly be, be, be yours, right? And the Edicom information, 9272211, that's 876, 9272211, or sporta at educomco-op.com. That's contact information for Edicom as well. We're going to run on to our final presentation, and then we have lots of giveaways thereafter. Um, I am delighted to introduce a team member, colleague, friend, in the form of 
Mr. Roger Ben, a man who wears many, many hats. You know, he he wears a hat of the Student Service and Development Manager for Leslie Robinson Hall. He's also in charge of our debating and public speaking um, program here on the campus. And he's going to be, be, be sharing with us um, on an important theme, you know, the, the, the OSND courageously cultivating community. Put your hands together, make some noise in the chat, do what you have to do, and help us make welcome to center stage, Mr. Roger Ben. Thank you so very much, Mr. McKenzie. Welcome all who have chosen to be here at this time in this space. Uh, I imagine that you're actually excited. You are now getting to uh, finish off the day. If you happen to be in Jamaica, it's raining cats and dogs. If you're not in Jamaica, then you may realize that it's a little bit warmer on your side of the village. But uh, it's, it's a good day. The atmosphere is right. It's, you know, it's a good vibe. And certainly uh, I am honored to be the person who is going to take you through to the final minute of this presentation. I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about culture. Yeah. Uh, and culture is very important. Uh, culture is why you are here. Apart from the fact that you're here to get a degree. Yeah. Uh, you are here also for the culture because that would have lived on for a long time uh, and it would have formed so many of the tapestry of the UWI that uh, you can't even distinguish it from faculty, right? So culture is important and, and building community is also important as well. So I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about uh, this building of the community, what it looks like, a little bit of an insight from the, the history of the, of the community all the way up to the COVID experience of the community, and we'll end at that moment, right? The point constantly growing, constantly being redefined, constantly being built. In other words, you are a part of the architecture. Your contribution is yet to be made because you're just coming in. Back on. Sorry about that. Uh, I'm waiting for my machine to, to calibrate, to go full screen with the... Ah, here we go. Good. Thank you so much for waiting. Uh, and so, as I was said before, um, your part is important, is pivotal in this moment because you are going to be a part of the future builder, uh, the future building block of the UWI. So a community, let's understand it, uh, it has, is, is a group of people generally living in the same place, uh, maybe not always living in the same place uh, because we now have this kind of, we have commuting, we also have virtual, no, we, we also have residential. But let's focus on uh, a group of people having a particular characteristic in common, yes? Uh, and such a group usually shares a concern or passion for something that it does and it interacts regularly to learn how to do it better. So that is particularly important for this community that we want to talk about in terms of what we're cultivating and how it works, right? So the interaction is critical in, in, in terms of the community that we're building and in terms of the sort of things we do within this space. Now, what is our common interest? Because we did talk about uh, the community and the fact that it's a shared interest usually. Now, the whole purpose of the institution is, uh, is geared towards student success, your success. To the extent that you're willing to come here and to make the most of the opportunity, the UWI is committing to ensuring that you have a fulfilled and a fulfilling experience, right? And so it's about your success in a wide range of areas, whether it's going to be socially, personally, professionally, 
in other ways. But more than that, the institution also lists some critical areas that they consider that it considers to be an ideal um, or it considers to be ideal characteristics for the successful student. And listed uh, on the slide below are some of those uh, qualities that we, we think make uh, a very successful uh, student. So look at those qualities. Some of those you may already have. Some of those you're working on, that's quite fine. That's okay, that's a part of the process. Some of those you may not have been exposed to. Uh, that's quite fine as well. We're looking at building some of those. And having spoken to the, to the chaplains, would have seen uh, how their part fit into this as well. Having spoken to a number of other persons throughout the course of the day, I'm sure you're seeing how that fits in, yeah? Now, the UWI space, which is your community, right? Uh, of course, you understand it's, uh, it's a regional institution uh, with outfitted with over five faculties, six faculties, uh, because I think the faculty of sports has been added and I have not included that. But also, I want to highlight the Office of Student Services and Development, which is where we're talking to you from, right? Uh, along with registry, uh, which is admissions in this case, the Office of Student Services ushers you in, it meets you at the gate, which is orientation, and it ushers you in through the door of the UWI. The OSSD is committed to the institution's mission, which is creating a learning environment that facilitates and encourages the development and delivery of high quality programs designed to foster the holistic development of the individual. What does that really mean? The DUWI sees you as more than just an academic student. It sees you as a student who requires the sort of social uh, additives that is going to make you competitive, not just in a boardroom, but competitive in terms of how you network, competitive in terms of how you relate to each other in other spaces. Because we believe that your, your growth and your development is not just limited to a desk. In fact, in the new dispensation, that may not even be possible, right? So the whole idea of a holistic development for a student is critical. And a lot of you would have chosen UWI for that very purpose, right? You've, you've seen our achievements outside of the classroom. You've seen our athletes. You've seen our, uh, our performers. You've seen the, the U.S. singers. You've seen so many different things about the UWI that is not in the classroom, but it's distinctive. It's, ex it's excellent. And you can appreciate it as well, right? Now, we, in any community, we are always excited about having new members join the community. And therefore, we extend a warm welcome to you. And to highlight the community, the UWI, if you should take the time out to walk the space, but even if you can't walk the space, the website offers you a whole host of virtual videos that you can actually look at, right? So you can actually take the, uh, the video tour to recognize that the UWI was a plantation, right? Uh, if you walk along the, the UWI's uh, ring road, you'll see semblance of the aqueduct and so many other historical sites reminiscing of the days uh, of, of, of slavery. It was also in World War II, a refugee camp, right? So it's steeped in history. This is a place that you have, this is a community that you've, you've, you've come into. We've all, we're also a community of academic excellence. We have uh, a whole host of graduates who have excelled across several fields. We have them excelling as Nobel laureates, Rhodes Scholars, Emmy Award winners. We, are, we have them as Olympians, right? So this kind of community that you have stepped into is not just a, a normal community. It's a high achieving community if you trust it to take care of you, if you trust it to be uh, that fact that, that will allow you to develop your best self, I don't think you would have made a better decision. So let's look now on a critical aspect of uh, building a community and also ensuring development within the community or programs and services. A major aspect of student services is one of those um, uh, key 
aspect of it. Now, we're going to be talking to you about co-curricular programs. When you get into faculty orientation next week, they will tell you a lot more about the, cur the, cur the, the curricular aspect of the community, okay? We have about 60, 60 functional clubs and societies, and it may be more, a minimum. Uh, so those numbers may vary based on who may have the adequate data, the correct data at, at the point, right? But more importantly, as in building and cultivating any community, we, we, we're not static. It means that we welcome your own uh, contribution. We may have 60 clubs and societies, but there is room for 60 more. There's room for 100 more. It's up to whether or not you recognize the menu, you're, you like the menu, and you decide, oh, well, this is a part of me that I want to explore. Can the UWI accommodate it? I'm going to tell you right away, yes, the UWI can accommodate it. We will, we're able to, and we welcome that kind of ability to innovate, to establish presence, and to develop something new. So clubs and societies are ever-growing. That's the point I want to leave with you, ever-growing. And feel free to explore and feel free to share your gift with us because that's a part of building a robust community. It can't be static. It must ever be changing, always evolving. We can only do that with you. Now, enter, enter, enter COVID. Uh, uh, it was the year 2020 when campus was bustling. Activities were Amazing. We had carnival, we had ring road, we had buses on the road. We were just stretch, just walking in the sun to campus. We were, you know, we were going to restaurants. We were just, oh God, we we're doing, going to classes. We were dressing in wonderful designer clothes, going to classes, then COVID. And it changed everything, right? Uh, including why we're here and how we're presenting to you today. Now, COVID required um, something very important um, from us. The term that is being used is to pivot. We had to pivot in this community as well. Even as we were building and growing, we had to change. We had to uh, figure out how we were going to move slowly from one space to the next because we didn't too understand how the online thing worked. Because before the online thing, you know, it was just Instagram and everybody putting up pictures. And before that, it was, you know, um, FaceTime and, you know, the works. We had to figure out now how to give academic rigor to online social media sites. And that took a little while because we didn't normally use Zoom to the extent we were using Zoom. We didn't normally use the Google Suites like we used to use the Google Suites, right? We had to go in and we had to learn all of those different things to realize that our students can't come to us anymore. We're going to have to go to them. That took us a little bit of a time. It, it was a little bit of a challenge, but let me tell you something. You are fortunate enough to be a part of a community that is absolutely willing to stretch themselves and to learn the, the, lear, the, to learn, the learn and to walk the walk. And we were able to deliver for you a student engagement hub uh, online and and. It's just really repackaging some of the stuff that we would have offered before. And I'll share some of those with you so that you still get a little feel of the UWI, even if you're not in face-to-face in, 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 in -face classes or you can't be involved in face-to-face -face clubs and societies. We have figured out how, to, how it is that we can create those kind of pockets of moments for you to ensure as a community, we are cultivating the right spirit. We are cultivating the right kind of graduate because those are things that are very important for us in our community. Remember up top, the type of community, grad, the type of graduates we, we look at, the type of distinctive student, those are the things we look at in our community. And as a result of it, those are the kind of, um, those are the kind of programs we develop um, to address some of those issues. So let's go ahead and look at some of those. Now, uh, so the objective would have been to provide students with uh, developmental opportunities and support service so as to get to, to foster retention. We didn't want students to get so depressed and to be opting to drop out of, 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 of the UWI. We wanted students to be willing to stay with us, to fight the fight, to weather the storm, 
And we also wanted them to constantly and to continuously be successful using the digital platform, right? So that was the whole idea of switching over um, to the virtual hub. Now, it made sense for us to do so because it was cost effective. Uh, it would have, we could increase student access. Why? Because activities that are online that we could do, for example, like we're doing now with YouTube, your ability to be able to watch it after the event is, is amazing, right? Before that, if you had to come to a, a session between two and three, after that, you would not be able to capture it anymore. But asynchronous abilities allowed us um, to video it, and students can look at it in their own free time. On the weekend, in the evenings after they have finished their, their, their activities, they can still access it, right? So whether it's, it's synchronous, meaning that it's happening live, or it's asynchronous, meaning it's happening after, and you can, you can view it in your time, we felt it was a really good idea. It improves staff and student technical capabilities. So I said to you before that we had to do some unlearning and some relearning, right? Uh, and students are expected to positively to respond to that because, I, I, and I've just been looking at some of the, the YouTube chats even before I came on and just the, amount, the sheer amount of sharing and the sheer amount of expression that I'm seeing, uh, that's a very good thing, right? Because you can get one, information from sources you would normally get it from and you're tapping into this, this kind of energy that is necessary right so it's 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 a it's a fulsome system in other words some of the resources that we've utilized uh the google classroom suites uh we're looking at skype uh we haven't used that too much these days whatsapp instagram twitter we're looking at the entire suite of social media we're there uh we also we're also attempting to get onto blackboard collaborate that's something you guys will learn a little bit more of soon. It's a major part of the thrust uh, in terms of uh, faculty. So you can't avoid it. You're going to have to learn it. You're going to have to ad uh, adapt and, and embrace it. Fairly easy to learn, though. But the point is student services in building this kind of inclusive community is there with you at every, at every phase. It meets you at the gate. It ushers you into the UWI, and it constantly stays with you. We are, we are the voice, we are the big brother, the big sister. We are the, we are the kind of companion that will be with you for the long haul. Now, we, I mentioned assessment and evaluation as critical. I'm going to ask you to show up for these activities because we are expected to uh, provide you with quality kind of programs. The more discussion and the more feedback you give is the better, is the better we can be is the more you can get from the experience, right? You can't come to the UWI and not immerse yourself into every aspect of culture, into every aspect of the community. You'll never have this experience again in your life. You'll never be a first-year student at UWI again. You may be a first-year student at some other institution that you may choose to further your studies. But by then, you have so many other responsibilities looking at. It won't be fun as much as it's going to be now. Right now, you're still at home. Mommy's still cooking food. You're still able to just relax and enjoy and to, to immerse yourself without too many responsibilities. Don't take this period lightly. So the point I'm making is make use of it and get yourself involved, right? Give, our, give your comments where you need, you need to. Give your uh, feedback where you need to. And let us see you present in the community doing some of the work that you need to. We're looking at very three effective methods of engagement, intentional. So we're not just always going to be coming online to bombard you with information. We're very, we very specific in terms of what we want, the type of community and the common interest we have. We are very clear on that and, and figuring out how we can serve you. Strategic, we're meeting at specific places at specific times and creative. We're constantly retooling and refiguring out how best we can meet you and create some interesting content for you. But also in this whole new uh, phase, you creating content for us is also important. Creating content for, for each other is also very important. This is a kind of open learning experience where you, we get to share in this kind of environment. We learn from each other, we grow together. 
some of the uh, the activities you can expect in the community over the next couple of, 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 of weeks would have been the first year experience program that would have been discussed uh, already uh, for so many of you. Um, the student leadership and governance, you'd have heard from the Guild president. Uh, listen, I've benefited so much from, from just being a part of student government at the UWI. When you come, take the time to get involved in activities in terms of leadership. Leadership is, is not just, is not, leadership is, is not one of the emerging issues of importance when people are looking for jobs. They need to have leaders in their, in their businesses. Your ability to, to, have had, to have led a club, to have led a hall, to have led a group. Listen, even if people is going to call you ups, are too much, or they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna call you enough. Whichever name they may give you, or some people may choose to call you opportunistic, whichever name, name they may give you, I would want to encourage you to start writing your resume. Some of you are going to need uh, a resume to go to, um, to, for further studies, start writing it now. Some of you may need to do part-time jobs, start writing your resume now. Some of you may need to, uh, to get scholarships, start writing your resume now. Right, get involved in some of these student leadership uh, opportunities and start learning the art of representation, the art of advocacy. Uh, elections are online now. Uh, campaigning is online now. You can make use of it to the maximum. Please do so. You in one life. Uh, we have engagement for you in those ways. Um, awareness, we're, uh, awareness raising sessions, seminars. Um, community outreach. Uh, we support you doing community in any part of the world that you're in. Hook, um, let us know. Reach out to us. Uh, how can the UWI partner with you? How can you, UE One Life, partner with where you are in your community, in your village? Uh, we are willing to explore that kind of thing to ensure that we, your, 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 our activities are felt in the corner of the world in which you exist. Health and wellness is important. Why? For a year, many of you have not really had time to be exposed and to, and to have fun in the way you used to have fun, right? You have been locked away, locked in. And, and believe it or not, it has an impact on your, your own happiness, your own ability to relax, your own ability to communicate. So health is very important for us. Health and wellness is very important. So you will find us doing some, some, some wellness tips online. You will find yoga sessions. Listen, come in with your mat and get ready for your yoga. Mm, do your yoga. You'll be surprised to see how something like this can help you. Get ready. Be open for discussion. These are important ways of relieving the energies that are some, somehow going to weigh you down. You know? So participate in some of these activities to get the stress out because you eat. And any kind of institution that is higher level institution is going to become stressful. You have to find creative means of channeling uh, such um, so that you're end ending up on the healthy side of, of life. Academic support, this is online, uh, very critical. You will hear more about academic support, make use of it. It's, it gives you the list of different ways. Academic counseling is, is, is uh, an appreciative advising is there. You can make use of it. Don't underestimate it. Online tutoring are available in case of courses that you need help in, uh, especially in the, in the quantitative courses, in the, in the, in the math and the, science, the deep science courses. The academic support is going to be there for you, right? So, uh, so make sure that you access it. Those writing courses as well, the academic support provides some help for you. Don't waste time. Get going with the support that you need to excel. The disabled student support system is also there. Also, you can take the time to volunteer in this area as well. You have a natural knack for people, for helping people. Reach out to the, um, to the disabled um, student support um, area. It's called um, the, it's, it's, it's called the um, <laughs> special student services, right? So you can actually volunteer to be a part of special student services and you can then help or students who may need it, or disabled students. Career services, the list of things are there that you can actually get done. 
uh, your resume clinics, your career counseling. Some of us are, are, are not too sure of where, where we want to go career-wise. Would like some direction, you can get that. A whole host of things are being offered in that way. Your online commuting office, your online commuting life, a whole host of things are going to be there for you um, online where you can access issues about housing, issues to do with scholarships and bursaries, and just connect, connecting you to overall resources. So those are amazing opportunities you can access. Residence life, we have over 10 halls of residence. Most of those are closed now, but some remain open. But all those halls are available. Your hall of choice, if you still love it and you have signed up for it, that hall will be in touch with you. We're going to keep you in the live. We're going to keep you in the know. And we are going to keep you a part of the community. We need you to keep constructing and cultivating a positive culture. And we want that from you. So we're going to be showing, showcasing all of, some of, all of these videos, via videos, via um, chats, via forum. Pay, uh, pay attention to the notifications. They are coming out and they're going to be a part of it. The University um, Environmental Program LEAP is about environmental awareness. You just can't be in a world nowadays where you're not focused on the environment. Countries, international organizations, everybody is advocating for the environment. You have to have a kind of a, an environmental footprint in the new order for people to appreciate you and to, and, and to see you as legitimate. So very important as well. Now, uh, please visit our website. You can see some more information there. It's uh, myspot.mona.uwi.edu uh, forward slash OSSD or, or OSS. You can get more information there or you can just simply type in Office of Student Services and Development. It will come up and you'll be able to access it uh, with, with very little hassle. So it shouldn't be a problem uh, at all. I want to welcome you to the UWI family. It welcomed me in, in, in about, let's not count, it welcomed me a couple of years ago. And it, con it continues to welcome me. Through several degrees, it has welcomed me. It has welcomed me into employment and I am constantly seeing myself growing and evolving. You've chosen the right family. You've chosen the right community to grow and to continue to discover yourself. You're in safe hands, welcome. And thank you so much. Thank you very much, Mr. Ben, for sharing us in such a, you know, exciting in manner. And we certainly hope that our students will make use of the range of opportunities available to them for the outside of classroom, beyond the classroom, even learning experiences. So, um, students, we, we, we sincerely hope that you, you benefited from what we had to share with you today. We will continue to be here for you as you navigate the space. We will stand by you. Our commitment is to foster student success. And you have heard from uh, most recently, Mr. Ben, the contact information for the Office of Student Services and Development as we help you on this journey. Let me do some giveaways um, before we you know, wrap things up here. So, two gift vouchers. One from Mr. Athal Hamilton, valuing $10,000. And one from Ms. Dan Bailey, members of the team here at the OSSND. And these can be redeemed at the university bookshop. Certainly, you can order whatever you need through the online portal at bookshop.mona.uwi.edu. And the questions now are, list two of the, the programs or services outlined by Mr. Bent um, that fall under the Office of the Student Service and Development. So two of the programs or services, any two that are delivered um, by the office, and yours is the, the gift of $10,000 redeemable at the, the bookshop. So the first person to do that gets uh, a gift voucher. There's also one more prize of a free car wash and vacuum provided by Wash and Unwheel Mobile Cleaning Services. The contact number is 876-493-5146. And this is um, for the, the person who will list for us 
two of the characteristics of the distinctive Unoblai graduate. Two of the characteristics of the distinctive Unoblai graduate. Okay, and so, um, and the final gift voucher for the bookshop. So we're gonna pose a question for that. And the first person to give us the, the response to that will get um, a gift voucher of $10,000. So you have to list the social media handles for the first year experience program. List the social media handles shared for the first year experience program. If you can list those um, social media handles, then yours is a gift of $10,000 redeemable at the bookshop. That's my final question. The team will monitor those and will um, tell you how you can redeem your various prizes. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you so very much for being with us uh, today. Um, we appreciate your, your presence with us and certainly we look forward to engaging you going forward as we work with you to make this a memorable UWI experience. I'd like to you know, acknowledge members of my team, just you know, Mrs. Nikisha Vincent, uh, a tower of strength in delivering on this program, as also Mrs. Rasheen Ropa Robinson, as also Miss Janelle Morgan and Miss Taname Jackson in particular, you know, would have worked behind the scenes around a, a host of things that have happened. You know, thank you all for your, your leadership and the support that you, you give. Um, let me acknowledge um, Ishmael Preston. Um, he's just been fabulous. He, along with his team from MITS, Ishmael, Ishmael we appreciate you and the, the work that you do. You give human service under very difficult circumstances, and we, we thank you for partnering with us to deliver on um, today's program. Certainly, we, th we thank all our presenters, all our participants, and you, our first-year students, for making it first and foremost to UWI Mona, and secondly, for staying the course with us. Um, if you know of persons who may have missed today's session, then please encourage them to view this on the YouTube channel so that they too can benefit from the, the rich information shared with you today. We look forward to welcoming you to our orientation session by faculty next week. Please check the schedule for the specific date of those um, orientation sessions and the start of classes on the 6th of September. Continue to stay safe and please remember to be your brother's keeper as we, we navigate the challenges of the day. Have yourself a good afternoon and remain safe and we look forward to seeing you soon, whether it is in the virtual space or physically here on the campus. Blessings to all.